they're going to stay. But I think two sets of players down on the pitch there who'll be thinking, we could do with three points from this match. James Collins is going to watch it alongside me, former Welsh international central defender. And uh, as usual, it's all about the three points, isn't it? It is, and, and you know, we, we saw with Brighton last week, you know, that we know the way they play, they're going to keep possession and, and, you know, 700 passes last week against against West Ham. So, you know, I'm sure they don't change the way they play, they'll be playing the same way, but, you know, the three points are all that matters, you know, both teams, you know, could, could desperately do with them. So here we are, first time you and I have commentated together, James Collins, former West Ham, Aston Villa, Cardiff City, central defender and we're watching Brighton and Hove Albion against Newcastle United on five live from BBC Radio and Brighton it is the home team in the blue and white striped shirts blue shorts and blue socks kick off they're playing from right to left and that's a poor clearance actually by Fabrucken their goalkeeper but Newcastle couldn't take advantage and Newcastle in their green change strip the Saudi Arabian style green colour shirts with the black trim white shorts and white socks and uh, Newcastle winning a throw-in down the right-hand side. Just down to our right, the captain, Kieran Trippier, to take this. Brighton making three changes today. Danny Welbeck's not fit, so he's out. Uh, two changes in defence as well. Milner and Webster substitutes today. So Van Hecker and Veltman have come in, and Pedro, the club record signing, is uh, playing in place of Welbeck. I'll run you through the teams in a moment. But the ball's played through to Isaac. Edge of the area, could be in here. Van Hecker comes across and does very well. Isaac was through into the penalty area, but Van Hecker recovered extremely well, went to ground, put the challenge in, and actually played it off Isaac behind for a goal kick. You could see, John, we, we, we questioned how Newcastle were going to set up, were they going to, they were going to press high, and, and they've won the ball back, great ball through. You've got to say the Van Hecker, it's an incredible challenge to get back, because it looks a goal all over. Now, did he actually get the ball there? I'm <laughs> just looking at this. It is a goal kick for Brighton, which, uh, well, obviously, they had a look at that. I did wonder when I saw that one replay there whether he died in, missed the ball, got the man, and, the, and it bounced through behind. And is that, you know, did did have a shout? He did make an appeal, but he didn't go down. Either either way, John, you know, it's, it's a great chance early on. He'd, he'd be disappointed he didn't take the shot a little bit earlier and, and at least hit the target. Yeah, so Brighton making three changes, a little uh, early drama for them there, and it's stupid. Young can't keep the ball in after Februggen <laughs> cracked a pass to him. Uh, round about thigh height at pace next to the touchline couldn't control it, it's out of play for Newcastle throw and their supporters in the end to our right are uh, absolutely jubilant at, uh, at that moment there um, Brighton as Newcastle go back into their own half have Verbruggen in goal back four of Veltman, Van Hecker Captain Dunk and De Stupignan uh, then in midfield Gross and Gilmore and March on the right Matoma on the left, Joao Pedro and Evan Ferguson but it's Newcastle who've dominated the early exchanges and here they come again half inside the Brighton half they've made just one change Almiron now tries to reach it just knocks it back against the Stupignan who recovered well actually and plays it out to Matoma who then knocks it back to oh that's a poor clearance from a Stupignan it was cut out by Tonali and the ball into the middle is steered wide by Isaac from near the penalty spot it was a crowded penalty area there were bodies in there in front of him, but he shot wide of the right post it's, by three or four yards. It's another great chance early on. You can see exactly what Newcastle are going to do, John. They're going to press Brighton and, and, and try and win the ball up as high as possible. You've got to say, it's a, it's a great chance. He's on his own on the on the penalty spot, and he'd be disappointed again. But it's, it's, it's come off his shin, if anything, and, and, and put it well, well wide. Well, you know what? That Mark Chapman, he might be right. Yeah, it looked like we're in for goals. This this could this could have plenty of thrills as uh, there is a foul on Joao Pedro, 10 yards inside the Brighton half. They take a quick free kick down through March, is saying that he was fouled by Dan Byrne, who's in central defence. And uh, and it is free kick given. Referee Stuart Atwell, no yellow card, hence the booze. Roberto De Zerbi down there in front of us. He's lasted, James, three minutes <laughs> and 30 seconds with his jumper on he lasted, before he's peeled it off. He lasted slightly longer than me and you, John. He did, because it is a warm, warm September's afternoon down here close to the south coast and the sparkling English Channel. 
and Pascal Gross is going to take this free kick for Brighton from just in front of the centre circle, curls it forward. Is that got a head to it for Newcastle? Bounces down and is cleared away by Almiron. This is for Tonali to chase, but Estupinian got there first and Brighton back in their own half. So the one change for Newcastle, Botman did not make it. He's out with the injury that he picked up late on in the match against Liverpool. So Burns in central defence. He's already committed that. One foul and uh, Target comes in for his first start of the season, Matt Target. But other than that, it's as... Newcastle have been in in all of the matches so far this season with Pope in goal, Trippier, Cher, then Burn and Target, but then the same midfield, Bruno Gimarange, Tonali and Joe Linton, who is a doubt, but is OK, he plays, and Almiron, Isaac and Anthony Gordon, uh, the front line. But Brighton coming on the right-hand side, Solly March through to Gross, little flick, took a touch off the defender, and March hits the shot from near the right corner of the penalty area, left foot, struck it well, and it flew away high across Pope, but he knew it was going over by three or four feet. I've got to say, it's a great, great opening five minutes. Both, you can't really call that a chance. You know, Solly March on his left foot on the on the edge of the box. That's a clean strike, but he's put it over the bar. But credit to both teams. They both come out with the intent of of, of going to win this game. And like I said, it's, it's been a great opening five minutes. It has nil nil. Brighton nil. Newcastle United nil. And uh, the ball is charged down by Evan Ferguson and it bounces out of play for a throw into Newcastle just down to our left across the, the rich blue of the carpet that is just off the pitch here at the uh, Brighton and Hove Albion Stadium T Kieran Trippier a bit short with that pass Ferguson has picked it up placed it to the edge of the area March is there March then couldn't find the pass back to Ferguson and Newcastle were able to clear quick throw though it's stooping Jan Brighton are in their stride now after that promising opening by Newcastle United and Brighton go back towards the, the halfway line. Just a little short from Kieran Trippier. Ferguson was almost in. Yeah, there's been a couple of little mistakes, you know, that, that both you know both teams obviously like to play, like to get the ball off a goalkeeper. A little bit sloppy, both teams, you know. They, they've given the ball away in, in, in bad areas and, and given the opposition chances to, to get shots on goal. March now wriggles away down the right. March tries to cross, but in slides. Matt Target and puts it behind corner to Brighton from the right March has already caught the eye three goals this season he's taken a quick corner oh nice work then the cross on the right hand side header right across the face of goal and wide by Joao Pedro goal kick Newcastle nil nil I'm tired already John watching this with the, the, the pace of it it's, it's, it's been a frantic six six and a half minutes already but credit to both teams both managers they've set their teams out to come and, and get the three points definitely the right decision to take your jumper off, my jacket off. Roberto De Zerbi in his black T-shirt down there. And uh, excellent from Brighton, responding to the good Newcastle chances, the the opportunities for Isaac. And now Brighton have had their attempt at goal with March and that head out wide from Joao Pedro. The, the record signing, the £30 million club record signing from Watford during the... Uh, the transfer window, ball played forward for Newcastle, Isaac near the edge of the penalty area but Van Hecker comes across and it bounces down and Veltman's able to clear it away and then Dan Byrne is in, absolutely towering all over Ferguson and uh, the end on it, up in a heap on the floor together, free kick is given but nothing more than that, so that's two fouls now by Dan Byrne in the middle of the pitch, free kick fired forward and Trippier's able to see it back to goalkeeper Paul. You can Paul. see already... John, Dan, Dan Byrne and, and, and Evan Ferguson are, are having a battle, you know, they, you can see already the ball's getting played out. He's done well so far, Ferguson, the ball's come into him. Obviously, Dan Byrne's a big, big lad and he's, he's held his own and, and, and got two or three vital free kicks already. Brighton nil, Newcastle nil, if you just switched on to this after on this tremendously busy sporting weekend, as it always seems to be at this time of year. Trippier challenging for the ball, but it's bounced out of play. Final touch was off Trippier. It's a throw into Brighton on the left-hand side. Uh, there is a choice of listening right now, and it's a good choice as well. Either this match in the Premier League or Dan Evans against Carlos Alcaraz, live from New York at the tennis on Sports Extra via BBC Sounds. We'll uh, keep you regularly updated on what's happening in that match. I, I think I heard it said that uh, Alcaraz had made the better start. Brighton nil, Newcastle nil. It's back with goalkeeper Verbruggen. Uh, who chips it out to a Stupinian, but it bounces up rather awkwardly and Newcastle are all over him and Almiron's won it back and now here's Bruno Gimaranch on the right-hand side his cross into the head of um, Gilmore 
and it bounces away kindly for Brighton to Matoma, who's off and running. He's off on one of his runs, Matoma. He's 10 yards inside the Newcastle half, but Tonali just glided across and was able to put the challenge in. Beat two men, though, Matoma. He's already scored that brilliant goal, hasn't he? against uh, Wolves, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's so nice to see, you know, certainly me being an ex-defender, you know, you've got a player like Matoma who can pick the ball up, run it with ease, you know, 40, 50 yards at the pitch. It, it just takes the pressure off so bad. But I'll go back to Verbruggen, the, um, the Brighton goalkeeper. There's three or four times already he's, he's tried to play a ball out to the left back. And he's overhit it or he's, he, he's, he's put too much weight on the pass and, and Newcastle have pounced on it every time. Yeah, and uh, I read an interview with him in the build-up to this match talking about how good he is with his feet. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not a big, I'm not a big fan of goalkeepers mentioning they're good with their feet. Uh, right. Okay. Well, we know where we are there then. Here's Pedro Mitoma on the left hand side. Pedro's cross straight into Almiron. Shouts for handball, but he had his arm tucked into his chest. Did uh, Almiron go square? Now it's played out towards the right hand side by Veltman. Here's Sully March. Drops his shoulder. Takes on the defender. Oh! And the cross comes into the near post and Nick Pope was right down near the foot of his post. And actually, I, I think, think it's almost caught him out. It must, it must be a deflection. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's almost Nick Pope's gone for the cross and it's a slight deflection and it's almost nicked in at the front post. Do you know, for a minute there, I thought he'd actually scooped it into, into the, the net. net. Yeah. But he, he, he did scoop it round the post. And uh, corner then to Brighton as a result of that. This is good pressure now. Good game. Ten minutes played. High corner, deep to the back post, headed across by Dunk to the edge of the area. It's Stupinian, hits the shot, and Nis hit it quite badly. I mean, there was a whole gang of Newcastle defenders and Brighton players in front of him. But, I mean, that was set up brilliantly, worked we brilliantly. Would, we would have had the perfect angle as well, but uh, it's a tough chance, you know, half volley, edge of the box, headed back from Dunk. You know, it's, it is a tough, tough skill to, to master the half volley from that far out, but, um, yeah. What a bad scuff. Yes, it was. But uh, Brighton now on top. Brighton nil, Newcastle nil. Brighton, who lost here to West Ham this time last week, actually. I was listening to it. Alistair Bruce Ball was sitting in this very seat. That's when they had 73% of... In fact, they had more than that. They had 80-odd percent of possession, didn't they? And uh, in that match, Brighton yet lost to West Ham, who did a, an excellent job, your old club, on Brighton. But here come Brighton again as uh, in comes the challenge from target to put it out of play so uh, Brighton lost that match Newcastle have lost their last two but defeats to Manchester City and Liverpool and actually led 1-0 in the 80 odd minute and yet lost the match with those two goals from Darwin Nunez against the 10 men ball back with Febrocken the Brighton goalkeeper the Dutchman long long high clearance from him this time but target does well is able to uh, to beat Solly Marsh and now Joe Linton out on the left hand side comes in field towards the edge of the penalty area this is almost feels like this is the first moment in this match where the, the pace has just dropped as Tonali black hair bobbing plays it in field towards Bruno Gimaranci went to drive the pass through the middle but Van Hecker was able to intercept it and Brighton have got it back on the edge of the penalty area with the captain Lewis Dunk Back in the England squad again. I think he will get his chance to play if he if he stays fit. I think he would have done at the end of last season, actually, in the internationals, had he not had to withdraw through injury. And Roberto De Zerbi. I don't know if you picked that up on our microphone down here, but that, that shout you could hear, that was we, Roberto we, De Zerbi. Yeah, we were mo I, I was saying about the passes he's been playing out, 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 out to the left back here, and I think he wanted his goalkeeper to hit, to keep hitting that pass. They're obviously working on it because they've done it four or five times today, and, and, and that's, he was furious with his goalkeeper. Well, if he, if he repeats that at half-time, Bart Verbruggen's going to know about it. Cross on the right-hand side. March in field. Here's Pedro. Now Billy Gilmore. Square from him towards the left-hand side. And then Estupinian to Mitoma. Mitoma with Trippier in front of him, Almiron there as well, still nil-nil on five live, Gilmore, that's a lovely ball through, Ferguson shoots left-footed, but Byrne went across actually, forced him wide, and the shot with his instep just ran through to Nick Pope, who was able to gather it up. Great ball from Billy Gilmore, little slide up, they kept the ball well previous to that, uh, Brighton, you know, as we, as we know they do, you know, happy to keep possession, one good ball from Billy Gilmore into Evan Ferguson, and you've got to say it's a tight angle, but it's a chance. Brighton nil, Newcastle nil. We're in, or just outside Brighton. 
and it is bright and breezy. And, uh, and De Zerbi just comes back towards the edge of a, his seat and puts his hands on the side of his head as if he's, some as if he's going he's, off to sleep. The first time I've seen him live, he's some character. I've not seen him in this position before because we're right down just, uh, just close to pitch level and he's right in front of us. So uh, this is going to entertain us. Brighton nil, Newcastle nil. Van Hecker, the tall blonde number 29. The Dutchman turns, plays it back. Webster on the bench. For this one and Milner as well after starting the first three matches gets a rest today against one of his former clubs and now Lewis Dunk is just able to wander the ball forward Newcastle have just sat off Brighton while they have the ball near the edge of their own penalty area and it goes back to Verbruggen again who uh, finds Van Hecker who's just walking the ball up towards the halfway line then through they're, they're, they're sort of picking and choosing their times, Newcastle. Sometimes they're letting the back four have it and they put the, don't press, and other times they're pressing and trying to catch them out. Anthony Gordon wins the ball back. First time I think I've said his name in the match. He was very much in evidence in the early stages of the match. Last Sunday afternoon against Trent Alexander-Arnold. Comes to the right-hand side. In forward steps, Cher to win it back for Newcastle. Tonali tried to play a first-time ball, comes back to him. Then does play it again to Almiron. Almiron off and running into the penalty area on the right-hand side. Across, or deflected off Duncan. Down went for Bruggen, actually to change direction Great and make a decent save down at the foot of his post to push it wide for Newcastle corner yeah it's a deflection off dunk and, he, and he's, he's expecting the cross so he's sort of in, in the position for a cross deflections come off dunk and he's done well to get down to his left hand side and tip it round so a corner for Newcastle this there first looking to my right Kieran Trippier just leaning over there and just pulling up the top of his left sock still nil nil but uh, bright opening after 15 minutes Trippier drives this one in low, takes a touch off Solly March, but that touch has taken it to his teammate Estupinian, and now Brighton sweep forward over the halfway line. Estupinian to Mitoma, Mitoma running at Gordon, Mitoma cuts in field, right foot shot, hit the defender, and then bounced back to him, and he just really softly scooped it forward through to Pulp. Kieran Trippier has done unbelievable there because he's took the corner that's been cut out and, and, and Brighton are away. 4 on 3 I think, going the other way, full length of the pitch. Kieran Trippier, he's, he's probably done an 80-yard sprint to get back and, and block the shot, tremendous. Started every Premier League match last season, Kieran Trippier, 32, now 33 this month, but uh, no sign of a lack of energy, and I'm sure he'll be involved with England in the matches against Ukraine and Scotland. You'll hear them both on Five Live. In fact, the Ukraine game will be in Poland this time next week for the commentary on Ukraine against England. We're going to go to New York in a moment, but here is Pedro, João Pedro for Brighton, up into the penalty area, Trippier comes across, leans into him, Pedro goes down, ball still in the area, from Newcastle, well, shouts for a penalty, but I think, I think Pedro went down rather easily there as Trippier came in, however, and now it is uh, Bruno Gimarain who goes down in the centre circle, no free kick there either, Gordon takes it up, gives it to Isaac, Isaac, Cutting in from the right-hand side, then goes wide, defender goes down, Isaac pulls it right across the penalty area and there's no one there in a green Newcastle shirt and Brighton can clear. Um, we'll come back to that, but let's just get an update from the US Open from Russell Fuller. Jack Draper, who gave himself just a 30% chance of playing in the US Open because of ongoing worries about his left shoulder injury, is now a set away from the fourth round. He leads Michael Moe by two sets to love, while on the Arthur Ashe Stadium, Dan Evans finds himself 1-5 down, first set to defending champion Carlos Alcaraz. So I was right when I said that Alcaraz had made the better start. Brighton nil, Newcastle nil on the Five Live commentary match from the Premier League. Three more commentaries tomorrow, but a, a real burst of action there. James Collins will have a word, but Brighton are building again. Here's Veltman, ball just ran away from him, had to play it back towards the halfway line. So what about Pedro then? Any, yeah, any think shout it, for a it penalty? Would, it would have been soft trip here again. I think here, Scott. here he is again, Pedro, nice turn. Gives it to Matoma to his left. Matoma shot comes off Trippier, bounces away and spins out for a corner. This is almost like a basketball game, John. We haven't got time to comment on all the action, but the, yeah, the penalty shout, I think it's shoulder to shoulder and, and, and Pedro's gone down a little bit easy, but then Newcastle go up the other end and have a chance themselves. Yes, they did, and uh, somehow the goals have not been breached, and uh, we have got a stop bridge. Referees just come across to have a word with well, Pedro and Trippier. I think they've continued the conversation there, haven't they? Trippier must have said to Pedro... It, was, it, would, have, it would have been soft. I think he's, um, he's just 
I'm mentioning yes. that he's probably a little bit stronger than him. Yes, that, that's what I suspect. So it is a, a corner, Pascal Gross, to take this. In the Germany squad this week, Gross. Cross to the back post, which is headed up and across. Mitoma jumps for it, crowd of Newcastle players couldn't get there. Ball bounces down, still in play. Solly March, March crosses from the left, that's a high one. Dunk, who headed that initial ball back across. Dunk has to stretch, somehow keeps it in over there. Well played, Lewis Dunk. And now Gross, back centrally. And Brighton, in possession. Veltman is going to play it back behind him to Van Hecker. 20 minutes played almost on the clock, Van Hecker square towards Gilmore, Gilmore's ball through but Joe Linton stepped forward, gives it to Bruno Gimmerange. Bruno Gimmerange against Gilmore in the middle of the field, stood up shoulder to shoulder, was able to pass the ball through to Isaac on the left hand side, Almiron making ground through the middle, Isaac now weaving his way infield, evades a couple of challenges, then comes back to Bruno Gimmerange who goes back out towards Gordon on the left hand side and Newcastle have possession inside the Brighton half you know two teams who love to have possession and it's actually fascinating watching them tussling for possession of the football exactly and when they do that i think this is good from newcastle trying to slow it down because there's no doubt brighton have been on top for the last 10 minutes just just get a bit of possession pass it around let the game settle down it's good to see from newcastle as well because we didn't we talked before the game whether they were going to press high and, and try and get after brighton and they're sort of picking and choosing they're sort of Sometimes they're pressing high, you can see Isaac trying to get his, his, his teammates up behind him to press, but then sometimes they're dropping off, setting little traps, letting Brighton have the ball and then going to, go to close them down. But they had that chance after the, uh, the Pedro penalty shout at the, down at one end. Isaac, when he was free on the right side of the penalty area, just needed to pick someone out in a green Newcastle shirt in the middle. Well, yeah, the, the game's that frantic. I don't think anyone could could get from the you know the defending box up, up quick enough to, to get the cut back. But it's, it's, it's such an open game. Yep. So Isaac's had a couple of chances for Newcastle. Brighton coming forward through the middle. This game was nil nil by the way last season. Here is Matoma. Matoma playing it across, but into the path of Tonali, who was underneath it and able to sweep it away towards the halfway line. Dunk steps forward, Matoma, Newcastle with everyone apart from Isaac back in that thrilling first weekend win against Aston Villa, Isaac scored two goals but he's failed to score in nine of his last ten Premier League appearances apart from that day when he scored the two goals against Aston Villa, could already have at least one in this match but here's Van Hecker to Billy Gilmore, low ball through the middle and now Gross is able to hold the possession against Gordon's challenge out to March on the right hand side then it comes back Veltman turns with his left foot gives it back to Solly March March back to Veltman again and then Veltman back to March down the right wing target dives in March turns him now he faces him but target back on his feet does well and then March brings him down sweeps his legs away and it's a free kick to to Newcastle but he defended it well Matt Target he did it's a, it's a nice little back, battle developing over there Solly March against Matt Target you know both both great players Solly March has started the game really well but when Target's been asked you know he's defended well so yeah it's, the pace of the game is, is incredible I think I think Eddie Howe's just telling his, his goalkeeper to take his time here and, and, and try and let it settle down a little bit Brighton and Hove Albion nil Newcastle United nil uh, if you've just been out watching any of the matches this afternoon we're going to round everything up for you at half time but uh, I think probably the headline, Erling Haaland scoring his first hat-trick of the season. The champions won 5-1 against Fulham and they have won four out of four in the Premier League this season as they attempt once again to defend their title. As uh, Brighton win a free kick, it was Anthony Gordon who was in on the challenge and uh, that has given us a free kick. The Brighton players are not happy. Looking at the Brighton players' reaction, they're not happy with this. They are not they happy. The replay. Well, Anthony Gordon had a right right rivalry with uh, with Alexander Arnold last Sunday afternoon and referee Atwell says yes yellow card for Anthony Gordon for well we've just seen it again James it, it, it probably is a yellow you know it's, he's tried to he's tried to Van Hex tried to clear the ball at the pitch and, and Anthony Gordon's come in tried to block it a little bit clumsy and, 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 and stood on the, on the on the top of his foot but they can be nasty so probably correct decision for a yellow card yellow card so uh, nil nil here, 6:06 to come after this. Uh, so Manchester City 5-1 winners against Fulham. Son scored a hat trick as well in our earlier commentary match. Tottenham's very good 5-2 win at Burnley, uh, and we're going to hear from Son Hyung Min as well at half time. Here is uh, Ferguson. Ferguson for Brighton. 
out to the right hand side chested down by Solly March Veltman is there behind him then in field again to Gilmore it's been quite influential Billy Gilmore in the midfield the uh, Scotland international in the middle of the field plays it out to the left hand side back to Dunk though near the halfway line Gilmore comes wants the ball then back to Dunk who's going to go all the way back to its goalkeeper uh, and as well as that uh, finished Brentford 2 Bournemouth 2 also 2-2 two -two between Sheffield United and Everton so their first points uh, and Nottingham Forest winning at Chelsea uh, as well amongst the, the headlines earlier Preston top of the championship after their win at Stoke and St Mirren remain top of the premiership but it is Rangers Celtic tomorrow and that's our first commentary match tomorrow afternoon midday kickoff so five live sport on air from 11.30 in the morning with Steve Crossman New, uh, Brighton go for a long ball forward out towards the far side but the offside flag is up and it's a free kick to Newcastle James Collins just going back to Billy Gilmore there John you know he's, it's great to see centre midfield he's always looking for the ball always wants the ball always wants to be involved in the match at every pass he's looking forward you know you, you see midfielders are happy to pass side to side whenever Billy Gilmore gets on the ball and obviously that comes from the way Brighton play but he's always looking forward always looking for that killer pass yeah and uh, and he'll be involved against England I'm sure with Steve Clark's inform Scotland as uh, Newcastle bring the ball forward here's Joe Linton in field now played across by Bruno Gimreinch back into the centre circle Cher is there most unusual to have a change at the back in central defence for Newcastle. Botman with this injury. Clearly they'll be hoping he's OK for the for the challenges to come. Share what a ball forward. Chested down by Joe Linton, but defenders were there for Brighton. And in the end, Van Hecker just got a touch on it back to for Bruggen. He did well getting back the Brighton defenders. It's, it's, it's a great ball from Share, you know, on the halfway line. Joe Linton's made a great run, peeled off the defender. It's probably touched has let him down a little bit to give the Brighton defenders a chance to get back. But again, it's... You know, it's, it's, it's great play. Van Hecker coming back in, started the first match against Luton, but then uh, Webster took over. But the decision today, I suppose, will be one of the things that Deserbi might be asked about after the match. But after he made that initial challenge on Isaac, that excellent defensive challenge, when it looked as though Isaac was going to open the scoring, you know, clearly it's helped his confidence. But Brighton play a long ball forward, Matoma to chase, Pope comes out into the full-back position. He's cleared it to a Astupinian. Astupinian then beats Trippier. Astupinian through. Mitoma now. Low ball across goal. Blocked by the leg of Pope. And it comes out now for a driving effort, which is dropped by Pope and scored by Ferguson. Gilmore with the initial shot. Pope couldn't hold it, even though it was straight into his chest. He spilled it out to Ferguson, who rammed it in with his right foot. And it is Brighton 1, Newcastle 0. And Nick Pope will not be happy with that. Deserve, John. It's, it's hell of a strike from Billy Gilmore, though. He's coming at him. It's bounced off. You know, you know it's, it's all come from you know the goalkeeper's initial bad clearance. You know, they, 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 he's, he's played it in field. He's out of goal. I've got to go back to it. Billy Gilmore's strike. You know, he'd be disappointed. The goalkeeper should be holding it. But it's, it's, a, it's a great strike and, and, and nothing that Brighton don't deserve. Absolutely caught it so sweetly from best part of 25 yards. Slight angle outside the area when it came back to him after Nick Pope had, had blocked the initial effort from Mitoma and there was a half clearance from Tonali but the drive but it was right into his chest Nick Pope yeah. slightly higher you know left side of chest put his arms up just spilled it straight I think, out I think Fabian Shea is just in front of him and tried to make a block literally six yards in, in front in front of Nick Pope and, and tried to block it and it's just gone over his knee so maybe that's taking his eye off it but He'd be disappointed he didn't hold on to it. But I say it again, you know, Brighton fully deserved their lead. And and also, you know, as well as that, the poor clearance from Nick Pope, who uh, was in the full-back position. So 1-0 Brighton. But here's Gordon now, skipping across the edge of the penalty area, playing at square, Joel Linton, lovely footwork! And then steers it wide as Dunk slid in with his left foot. Thought that was bound for the bottom corner, but just wide. It's, it's so end to I think it's one of the most end to end games, Premier League games I've seen. Um, yeah, it's again great play from, from Anthony Gordon. You know, he's cut inside. Joel Linton probably should do better. It's a bit of a tame effort, really, from where he was. Just, just on the edge of the box, side footed it wide of the goalkeeper's right post. Proving to be quite a challenge to keep a note on everything that's happening here. Brighton 1, Newcastle 0. And Evan Ferguson, in here is the goal scorer. The Irishman takes it on, plays it infield to Matoma. Pedro outside the box. Pedro shoots over on the slide from near the penalty spot, just leaning back. But it was opened up. It opened up for him. 
but he I'm couldn't keep the shot down. I'm glad you're sat next to me for this, John, with your experience, because I'd be struggling to keep up with this myself. It's, it's, it's incredible. I, I've never seen a game so end-to-end -end in my life. What, what are you saying? <laughs> no, they, 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 you, you could do it. I, 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 I'm struggling to keep up with it myself. I'm just used to that Mark Chapman talking <laughs> about my experience, but not always as kindly as you do. Brighton 1, Newcastle 0, with almost half an hour played. Super striker's finish as well, wasn't it, from Ferguson? I mean, people will say that was a simple finish, but, you know, that's kind of what he's building his reputation on, isn't it? This 18-year-old, let's not yeah, forget. Yeah, such a young, young lad, you know, when it comes back off the goalkeeper like that, just, first of all, the instinct to follow the shot in, and, you know, sometimes they fall through, sometimes they don't, and, and we've seen it before, you know, they... They come at centre falls like that sometimes and they, they rush it and put it over the bar, but you've got to say, he took it very well. I was listening to one of our podcasts driving down, the one with uh, Jermaine Defoe and Troy Deeney uh, on, on Friday afternoon, yesterday afternoon. And in actual fact, what part of that section there was them talking as goal scorers about how important it is to get in around the edge of the six-yard box. It's, we used to say it at West Ham, you know, to the centre forwards, follow it in. We, we used to have a say in ten a season, ten a season, or you know, even if it's six a season, you, you get them. And like you say, Anthony Gordon at such a uh, Evan Ferguson at such a young age has, has, has gone in and, and and followed it in, and, and he's got his just deserves. Yep, he has. That's his second of the season. Scored in the win against Luton when he came on as a substitute. And you say ten goals a season. That's what he got last season. Young Player of the Year, and um, I must say, he looks like. He looks like another Brighton player who, well, the, the world is his oyster as Dan Byrne is fouled by Solly March. And it's a free kick, an aerial challenge and a free kick for Newcastle. Oysters being the operative word, having been down on the seafront in Brighton. You had fish and chips earlier, I had fish and chips, I did. I had fish and chips, but there were oysters available. Yeah. And, um, and actually, the... The, the, the car sat nav took me away I've never been before driving from the middle of Brighton up here past the race course never been there before the views from the race course must be sensational on a day like this you can see the English Channel the rolling hills of the South Downs as uh, Gilmore is challenged fouled by Joel Linton and that's a free kick and, and Billy Gilmore is saying there you know, Joe Linton's put in a number of challenges to take a quick free kick. The referee allows them to as well. And Pedro, Joao Pedro, to Matoma on the left-hand side. Matoma into the box. Oh, does well. Comes in field, but the ball across was deflected back out of the penalty area. But Gilmore's all over this. You know, he seems to be everywhere the ball is. Billy Gilmore's there. He, he's constantly looking for the ball, John. Every, look, again, he's, you know, they, they're attacking. He's, he's asking for the ball, and, 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 he, and he's making it happen. Like I said, he passes forward 90% of the time, and... And he's making this Brighton team tick. Yep. Didn't happen for him at Chelsea when I think it was widely predicted that it would for Billy Gilmore, the former Rangers man, actually started out at Celtic, so I'm sure he'll be paying attention in the morning. But uh, just 17 appearances for Brighton last season. But if, uh, you know, it seems like he's showing his true self now. Here is Gross. Gross playing at square. Matoma on the edge of the box. Brighton already 1-0 up, but Matoma couldn't find the pass through to Stupinian. It was cut out. Groans from the Brighton fans in front of us. And the ball comes across the edge of the penalty area for Newcastle. Bruno Gimaraj back to Almiron and then back to Trippier in the right-back area. And Trippier plays it high and forward, but Isaac slips over and Brighton should have it back in fact it came out of playoff Van Hecker so Tonali takes a quick throw to Isaac Isaac now dancing away from Dunk and from Gilmore Isaac still in possession Tonali makes himself available on the right Tonali's low ball right across the six yard box Gordon couldn't get there raced in towards the edge of the six yard box couldn't get a touch on it but Newcastle still in possession 1-0 Brighton lead but Newcastle now thinking they might be able to find an equaliser Bruno Gimmerich 25 yards out carrying it from left to right ball into Tonali Stupinian with the challenge now Cher little ball through from Cher Almer on, on the edge of the box but the challenge comes in on him and now Cher out of position as Brighton break forward but Pedro actually plays the ball back out towards the right hand side breathless stuff 
it's incredible. The pace of the game, it, it, I said, I mentioned it again, it's almost like a basketball game. You know, they're, they're, it's having little lulls where both teams are, are, are keeping possession, let's try and slow it down, but you know, a lot of the chances have come from mistakes. Not, not so much mistakes, you know, trying to play out the way both teams like to from the back and, and, and the other team pouncing, but it's an incredible advert for, for Premier League football. Yes, it is. And uh, Ferguson is fouled from behind by Cher. This is seven or eight yards inside the Brighton half, but that was a challenge from behind. But referee Atwell deciding a free kick's enough for that, only a free kick. And so a free kick for Brighton. So they lead through the Evan Ferguson goal that came from the, the poor clearance from Nick Pope in his full-back position. He delivered it straight to a Stupinian who was, what, 35, 40 yards out, drove it onto the edge of the penalty area. Matoma's shot was actually saved by Pope, but the deflection bounced out of the box. And then, you'll see it on Match of the Day tonight, a ferociously hit shot by Billy Gilmore from 23 yards, maybe that sort of range, that Pope couldn't hold as he tried to gather it into his chest and it just bounced straight off his body out to Ferguson who snaffled it into the net, so 1-0 the lead. You look back to, to Pope, the, the, the initial clearance, you know, it's, it's not a hard clearance, he should do better, there's no doubt about it, but there's nothing wrong there in just, you know, not rolling out of play, but trying to get some yardage up the pitch, because if it does that, you know, obviously the, the goal doesn't, doesn't come along. And it's another match without a clean sheet for Newcastle United as well, which was their strength in the first half of last season, but now just two in their last 22 Premier League matches and that habit they've lost it for the time being 1-0 down here's Ferguson he looks full of confidence as well big guy short brown hair shaved at the sides as so many of them do these days here's Matoma brilliant pulls the ball down on the left wing plays it into a Stupinian inside the box left footed ball across the penalty area though straight to Bruno Guimarães for Newcastle who's able to control and play it away but that was well that was Mares like actually from Mitoma that's what that was he's got into those little positions down down the left hand side here quite a few times it? three or four times he, he's picked the wrong option and it's, and it's sort of come to nothing that time picked the wrong option Newcastle have gone for the cutback again which they have you know on a, on a number of occasions and not quite had the runners Tonali playing the ball through towards the edge of the penalty area Isak is there for Newcastle forced wide still in the box though he's got Almiron behind him comes back Tonali puts his foot on the ball Tonali now into the area then back out towards Almiron left foot across from him towards the back post Joe Linton stretching but Feltman did enough just did enough to block him and the ball is through for a goal kick and we've got well, we've got less than 10 minutes to go to half time James Collins, just the one goal. Feel could like have, could like have had many more. I feel like we've done a full game already, John. I do. I do. You need more fish and chips after this. Back down. Yeah. Goal kick then for Brighton. Gilmore to take. And then the ball forward towards Pedro, who comes short. Gilmore misplaces the path. Pass, but it runs to Gross. The Gross's ball over the top to Pope. Ugro gets the ball in between his feet just outside the penalty area it spins and the crowd are onto him straight away and he's able to this time to gather he didn't he, uh, I don't think he fancied the clearance that time John so he, he sort of muddled himself up a little bit but dealt with it in the end well he's such a good shot stopper Nick Pope one of the best really but, and I have to say going to the England squad announcement on Thursday I, I had him on my list that Gareth Southgate as he did in so many positions said he was sticking with the players who played in June and Nick Pope missed those matches because of a finger operation so therefore has to play, him, play his way back in one would assume past Sam Johnston to get back in the squad P took on the shirt here it's a free kick to Newcastle halfway inside their own half going back to the, the you know the, the chance we you know he should hold on to it but how many times you've seen John you know goalkeepers you know try and park when, it, when, the, when the shot struck that fiercely you know they, they, they try and palm it away or punch it away credit to him he's tried tried to hold on to it but it's not gone too well and I think you're right I think the, the shot coming just past the outstretched foot of Cher was definitely a factor uh, Newcastle then played out to the left hand side here's target bursting forward down the the left the the left back for Newcastle Gordon's there as well Gordon's cross headed away by Dunk might come out for Almiron no Matoma Matoma arrived from nowhere and was able to get a, a foot in to take the ball away into the full-back position. His clearance, though, has ended up with Cher, and now to the right-hand side, to Trippier. 
Trippier back into the edge of the area. Bruno Gimarange slides it forward. Tonali into the box. Stretch from Estupinian. Just got a touch. And then a weak shot. That's blocked inside the penalty area. Tonali again, but Estupinian is able to move across and strike the ball away past him downfield to the halfway line. Half time approaching when we will hear from, as I mentioned, Son Hyung Min on his hat trick as. Uh, Tonali is fouled by Estupinian. Estupinian just come through the back there, a bit, bit too eager to win the ball. Uh, quite a dangerous position for a free kick. The ball's been rolled into Tonali and yeah, he's just a bit eager, tried to get his leg you know, around him and, and caught him on the back of the ankle. So a free kick, Tonali learned this morning, like the rest of us, that Newcastle's first match back in the Champions League will be in the San Siro, where he was playing for Milan last season, the team that he grew up supporting. I suppose for him, he'll feel, well, that, that script was right there. And so it is, he'll go back to his old club. So uh, he'll want to be fit, and he is. He's OK after that challenge. Free kick, though, for Newcastle, who trail 1-0. High line held by Brighton. Trippier curves it in, but too close to Fabrogan, who comes tall, dressed in black, and is able to make the catch. So disappointing when, when that happens. You know, like I said, it's... it's it's a good position for a free kick and, and you don't expect it from Kieran Trippi, you know, his poor delivery, put it straight into the goalkeeper's hands, but they, they should be taking more care of them. It, it, it set plays in, in football, we know how big they are and when you get a chance like that, it's got to be better quality. Uh, in fact, at half-time, we're going to hear from both Premier League hat-trick scorers. Erling Haaland will be on as well, so listen out for him. Uh, Mauricio Pochettino and Steve Cooper after Nottingham Forest's win at Stamford Bridge. Uh, and also, it says here, an angry Marco Silva. So that must be after that. VAR uh, decision in the uh, in the Fulham game at Manchester City. So all of that at halftime, plus the latest on the tennis, live from New York. Tennis commentary continues on Sports Extra. As uh, we'll have the latest on the Walker Cup as well. By the way, long downfield for Brighton for Matoma, but he's a judge to have fouled Kieran Trippier, and that's a free kick to Newcastle on the edge of their own penalty area. Five minutes to go to half time. I think they have mixed it up a little bit more today, Brighton. You know, they, like we have mentioned, we all know how Brighton play. You know, they like to they like to pass it around, but the, you know, the, for Bergen, the goalkeeper occasionally has hit the long ball, trying to catch New, Newcastle out. Like I said, where they're trying to press, they are they are going slightly longer than, than than we've seen them before. That's a response to the way that Newcastle are playing, isn't it? As I, as I said, yeah. you know, they, sometimes they're pressing and, and sometimes they're trying to yeah. trying to create traps. So you could see they've worked on it. You know, if, if Newcastle are going to press, they're going to go slightly longer than they normally do, and it's, it's, it's worked it's worked perfectly so far. Brighton one, Newcastle nil. Brighton's first match in Europe will be here against AEK Athens, the Greek champions. As Bruno Gimarange just has to battle to keep the ball under pressure from Gross and Joao Pedro. And uh, Newcastle with Gimarange again inside his own half. Tonali plays it infield, but Joe Linton couldn't get there. Gilmore did well there again, putting pressure on Joe Linton. Gilmore, blonde highlights in his hair, turns, plays it back to Solly March, who just for the time being has appeared over here on the left-hand side. I had him on my long list as well, Solly March, possibly to get into the England squad as Gilmore is challenged on the halfway line but it bounces for Van Hecker who will have to be careful here because Isaac is thinking that he might play it back to Verbruggen the goalkeeper which he does but Verbruggen is able to take a couple of touches and then uh, that's the kind of thing he was talking about a couple of touches and then a nice pass out towards Estupinian Mitoma is uh, challenged by Trippier the ball bounces away to Brighton and Billy Gilmore and then Gilmore into the centre circle and Newcastle Oh, a lovely turn from Billy Gilmore to Bruno Gimarães out of the game and then Cher with a foul on Pedro. That's a free kick. And the cheers, you can tell, that's going to be a yellow card for Cher. There it is. Billy Gilmore again. It, it, you know, it, it's something that it's so easy to do, but it, it's, it's not, if that makes sense. He's a little shimmy towards the ball and just let it roll across his body and brighten her out. They're, they're attacking Newcastle again. He's been, he's been brilliant. Well, I think... On the first weekend of the Premier League season, I stuck my neck on the line and I said that match of the day would do a, a set of analysis on uh, Sandro Tonali after the Aston Villa game, which they did. Today, tonight, it's going to be Billy Gilmore, isn't it? They're going to break away, they're going to have a chat, and then it's going to be... And what about Billy Gilmore's influence on the game? Well, if what, things continue what we've to go seen so far, it, it, it would be fully deserved if they yes, do. Yes, it would. He's been excellent. Here is Gross 
Gross, right-footed after the free kick was taken short, comes off ahead of Gordon, under pressure from March, and that's going to be another corner for Brighton from the right, with half-time approaching. Blue skies over the stadium here, which nestles down in the rolling hills to the north of Brighton. Vapour trails across the sky. So one or two grey clouds coming in from the channel, it, it would appear. But a beautiful afternoon, and Brighton winning, and I think deserving it, but Newcastle could easily have scored themselves. Corner from the right then, for Brighton, lots of pushing and shoving in the area. Here's the delivery towards the penalty spot, Dunk got up to get his head to it, but it dropped wide and behind for a goal kick to Newcastle. 1-0 Brighton lead would have been an unbelievable header from Dunk uh, you know balls whipped out it's, it's so hard you know he's, he hasn't got he's being marked quite tightly and he's got up but um, yeah it would have been would have been hell of a hell of a header Brighton 1 Newcastle 0 real feel good atmosphere around this stadium as get, that's given away by Cher to Brighton Gross Gross takes it on he's around Bruno Gimmerheins and then rather clumsily Joe Linton comes in uh, Gross goes down that's no free kick Roberto De Zerbi can't believe it he's almost on his knees praying as Newcastle break away again James do you reckon there's ever been a manager getting the ice bath with the players after after the game because I think he, he, he's done more work than some of the players I how think. many how many red I think he got two red cards last season and several yellows he'll, he'll, he'll have got more cards than than many players did last season here it's now forward towards Almiron through the middle Almiron did look like a foul I have to say for Brighton but not given Gordon now nice footwork to the left-hand side to Tonali. Tonali curls it in, but Dunk is there near the penalty spot. They head it down and away, out wide to the right-hand side. Trippi is going to allow it to, to roll over the white line now, which it does. Throw in. Newcastle captain takes it. Bruno Gimmerheinz, he'll be off with Brazil. So will Joe Linton, both in the Brazil squad. They start their World Cup qualifiers over the course of the next week or so. Two minutes of added time as has been indicated by Craig Pawson. Cher, high ball out towards the left-hand side. Gordon allows it to bounce. It bounces up to head height. Veltman puts in the challenge, but Gordon comes away with the ball. He's cutting in field, but he got a heavy touch there, and it was cleared away on the edge of the box by Gross. Back into the centre circle. Yes, Pascal Gross in the, in the German squad at the age of 32, uncapped at senior level. Hope for us all, John. Well, maybe not for quite for all of us. <laughs> after earlier conversations <laughs> but uh, Newcastle with Joe Linton on the left hand side Joe Linton plays it in field and it bounces away and back into his own half and then Byrne has to come across Joe Linton was tripped over Ferguson might have tripped over Byrne and ended up on the in a heap on the ground but it's out of play for a throw in to Brighton yes happy happy faces down in front of us not surprised as well, the Brighton fans. They've so, introduced some. They've introduced the posh seats as well I since know. I was last you, year. You sort of right. felt it before the game, though. You know, that walking in from the car. You know, there's a good atmosphere outside the ground. The sun was shining. It, you could just see that there's a there's a real real buzz around the football club. Yeah, they've broken out into a chorus of Sussex by the sea as uh, Brighton take the the. Uh, the throw in on the far side or what's happened here the referee said take it again I say yeah, the ball was moving so it uh, it's a free kick to Brighton I, I learned a new phrase as well this week that I'd never heard before it's the motto of the local ale the local beer that they brew in Sussex and the motto is we won't be druv which apparently is the unofficial <laughs> motto of Sussex which means we we will not be you know cowed will yeah. not be and there we are and they've not been cowed after the win against after the defeat against West Ham last week here they are great response from Brighton but it's been a good game just the one goal somehow after the, the error errors from Nick Pope but a, a, a super striker's finish from Evan Ferguson but incident at both ends James Collins yeah the start was good you know we, we, we called it before the game you know both teams were going to come out and, and, and really press each other and, and try and play and, and, and that's what they've certainly done it's, it's been a tremendous game I, I, I believe I think that that, that, that that Brighton deserved their win saying that Newcastle had two 
you know, really good early chances, but um, a tremendous game of football. And like I said, I think Brighton deserved their 1 0 lead at half time. Yeah, looking forward to the second half. Brighton leading Newcastle at half time by one goal to nil. Uh, I'm back with John and James for that. Hat tricks this afternoon in the Premier League for Son and Haaland as Tottenham won 5 2 at Burnley and Manchester City beat Fulham 5 1. But the crucial moment in that game was City's second goal to go 2 1 up. Uh, Marco Silva very happy with a baffling VAR decision. We'll hear from him during half time. Big win for Nottingham Forest at Chelsea by a goal to nil. The other two games ended 2 2 between Brentford and Bournemouth and Sheffield United and Everton. Preston the top of the championship after a 2 0 win at Stoke. Four teams are level on 13 points at the top of League One. Exeter lead them on goal difference. Notts County are the new leaders of League Two after a 3 1 win over Accrington. And St Mirren are top of the Scottish Premiership after a stoppage time time equaliser at Livingston. Plenty of reaction to come during the next 15 minutes, but first here's the news with Nick. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. The government is under growing pressure to uncover the full extent of buildings in England made with a concrete which is at risk of collapsing. More than 100 schools and colleges have been forced to shut classrooms because of concerns about the material. The Liberal Democrats say Rishi Sunak needs to call an emergency COBRA meeting. The Home Secretary Suella Braverman has ordered a review of police impartiality and activism. She says there's been an unacceptable rise in officers taking a side on controversial issues. The Police Federation says officers have been used as a political football. Two people have been arrested on suspicion of murder after human remains were discovered close to a cliffside path in Dorset nine days ago. A 38-year-old woman and 48-year-old man from Bournemouth have been held. Dorset police say the victim found in Boscombe was a 49-year-old man. And Australia has launched a rescue operation in Antarctica after a researcher based there fell ill. An icebreaker ship has been sent to the Casey outpost where an air rescue was ruled out because of severe conditions. A clergyman by trade, a wondrous game he has made. Salford born, globally known, drawn to a clock tower, combatants over his shoulder, kicked and ran, then ball in hand. Is this tale true? That conclusion is up to you. Rugby World Cup 2023 starts Friday. Every game live. live. On 5 Live, Radio 5 Sports Extra. And the BBC Sport website. This is 5 Live Sport. Let's go straight to the US Open tennis where Dan Evans is putting up a fight against Carlos Alcaraz. Russell Fuller. Yes, one of three British players in action in the third round at the moment. There's commentary on Five Sports Extra on BBC Sounds. Alcaraz, brilliant for the first four games. He won them all. He took the first set 6-2. But he's having some difficulty here, trying to level at two games all. And back on serve it is now after Dan Evans got the early break. And Coco Vandeweghe, a semi-finalist at this US Open in 2017, after those first four games, this has actually been genuinely competitive. Yes, Dan has done a much better job in staying in Alcaraz's service games Alcaraz seems a little bit frustrated with himself, just certain plays that he's making mistakes, especially with the forehand. He's missed a couple easy rally ball forehands, just pushing it wide, not really having great shot selection on it. Jack Draper is two sets up against Michael Moe, trying to reach the fourth round of a Grand Slam for the first time, but showing frustration just a minute or two ago, throwing his racket to the ground because he's 5-3 down in the third set and looks like he might drop his first set of the championships. And Cameron Norrie underway as well against Matteo Arnaldi, who's an unseeded player from Italy. And Arnaldi has the early break, leads set number one by four games to three. Opening day of golf's Walker Cup. Have Great Britain and Ireland edged it? Ian Carter. It looks like they're going to because as I speak, Mark Power holds a putt from short range on the 18th to beat David Ford and that takes Great Britain and Ireland 7-4 ahead with one match left on the course. That's Preston Summerhays for the United States against Matt McLean. That's just gone all square on the 17th. So many of these single matches have gone the distance. Summerhays and McLean will as well and what we do know for sure, Mark, is that GB and I will have the 
advantage going into the second and final day. They currently lead 7-4, one match left on the course. England's women were thrashed by Sri Lanka in the T20 International, bowled out for 104. They lost by eight wickets. Carlo Sainz in the Ferrari is on pole for the Italian Grand Prix tomorrow, which you can follow on the BBC Sport website from two o'clock. As far as the day's Premier League football is concerned, Anthony Alanga got the only goal of the game as Nottingham Forest won 1-0 at Stamford Bridge. Here's Steve Cooper. Yeah, I mean, on the back of what went on at United last week and um, some some decent spells at, at Arsenal, you know, great credit and respect for the boys for continuing to to believe in in themselves, in, in each other, and and the plan, and um, and and getting a result that's been a long time coming away from home, but to get it here uh, at Stamford Bridge is is, is amazing and. Um, like I said, the players deserve it. The, the, the fans definitely deserve it for the way they've supported us. And um, I, I thought the game was always going to look like it did. You know, um, you don't come here expecting to dominate possession and create a lot of chances, but you do come here knowing that you you can um, be dangerous and you can create chances in the right way uh, and also keep a clean sheet. And um, you know, I thought we had the chance of the half from a set piece with Taiwu uh, in, in the first half. And then we showed brilliant sort of tactical um, solidity in, in the goal in terms of, of how we won it. And then the athletic and technical breakaway. And it's a brilliant goal. So after that, it was always about just keeping the clean sheet. And there's no shame in that because that's what we've done. We got three points. So um, just, just really pleased for everybody. And it was Maurizio Pochettino's side's first home defeat of the season. I think that we should not repeat uh, the mistake that we made. I don't want to take credit to to Nottingham Forest, but I think it's up to us to compete better. And in that uh, in that way, that we need to you know to learn from this type of game. That because the opponent compete and is aggressive, and I think we cannot make the mistake. We need to be focused 98 minutes on the game. Mauricio, you say your players were naive at times today. Is that a concern? And how can you rectify that? No, I think it's about to, to to be strong and to compete and to you know to have, get more uh, experience in the Premier League. Premier League is is the tougher competition, and of course uh, we are a, a young squad that uh, we need to improve from from our mistake and we need to be more clinical in both both areas. And I think today we create minimum chances to win the game, but we didn't score. And in football, if you don't score. You can explain, you can talk about philosophy, about methods, about experience, but in football it's all about to score and no concealed goals. You've obviously brought a lot of new players in, you've got a lot of injured players. Has this start been tougher than you, you thought it would have been? No, we knew, we knew. I'm not going to put excuses, we should win. That is the mentality, but um, yes, we need to recover all the period to, to be stronger and to be better and being more competitive on the training ground to, to fight for their place and increase you know, the level of the team. At the Etihad, it finished Manchester City 5, uh, Fulham 1. But at one all, uh, VAR decided to allow Nathan Ake's header, despite Manuel Akanji being an off- in an offside position and in the eye line of Fulham goalkeeper Bernd Leno. Here's Marco Silva. This is a huge mistake. Just people that never play football and don't understand nothing about football, if you are in, in office, you can say that is not that player doesn't have influence in the, goal, in the goalkeeper decision. If the ball goes in the direction of the player, the goalkeeper just dive. If that, that player moves, the player when moves, of course, it's a moment for the goalkeeper dies because the ball goes in the direction of that player. And the player pulled away from the moment to the ball goes inside the goal. The player is in, in clear offside position, is a clear, clear offside here, but in any part of the world. So, so just to be clear, you feel that Leno had to hesitate because he was aware of a kanji and, and that delayed his no, dive? Not that Leno. All the goalkeepers in the world they have to yeah. see the direction of the ball. The direction of the ball goes in the direction of that player. He pulled away from that, that, that position and after the ball goes inside the goal, that player influenced the moment, influenced the, the decision of, uh, of Bern and influenced the decision, even the official, influenced the, the decision of the official. Yeah. And for the, they didn't see for us in the, in the same way. And it's really because you speak ourselves, we are football people with the players, not just our players, their players as well. And no one believes how this decision was not offside. 2-1 at half-time then, then Erling Haaland got a second half hat-trick. Started a bit uh, sloppy, but uh, we ended in a good way, so uh, important win and 4-4 uh, four and uh, we go into national break with, uh, with a really good start. You'd not scored in your previous four games at the Etihad Stadium, I was beginning to get worried about you. 
yeah, don't worry, I'm uh, I'm back. <laughs> you certainly are. I mean, in terms of that today, you had to be patient, didn't you? You mentioned that it took a little bit of time for you guys to find your form. Why do you think that was? Yeah, I think it still needs. Uh, I think every year is like this in, in this club. We we sometimes start a bit late because uh, we are playing uh, the last games because we are the best team. Uh, so. Uh, it's how it is, and uh, we will only get better and better from this. But uh, this start here has been uh, phen phenomenal and uh, important. A brilliant week for you as well, of course, with winning the PFA Player of the Year to get a hat trick today as well. How do you keep on going? How do you keep motivated? How do you keep as hungry as you look today? Yeah, no problem for me. I'm uh, I'm always hungry, and uh, and it's a new season, and uh, I'm uh, I'm ready for uh, I'm ready for it. Hat-trick for Haaland, hat-trick for Son Heung-min as well as Tottenham came from a goal down to beat Burnley 5-2. Here he is with Guy Mowbray. Well, Son, how does that feel? I guess it's an obvious question, but good day at the office. Very good, but still, I think uh, we uh, have a still space to improvement because away from home, you can't, you can't consider a goal after 10 minutes. But I mean, the way we bounced back after 1-0 it down, was, it was fantastic, credit to... Uh, Every player who played, who was involved, but who came on the bench as well, I think they did a fantastic job. So I'm very, very happy that to get three points in a difficult place. You say space to improve. You had plenty of space on the field. Is that just the sort of game that you enjoy? Yeah, obviously, I think everyone enjoys when you have a space. And we want to have a ball. We want to have a, always build up with the ball so on the floor. So that's why I think everyone has to move in the, in the right direction. But I think space... It looked like we have a lot of space, but I think we're creating the space of uh, movement. Any every player was moving the ball without the ball, so which is we scored that many goals in a in a difficult place. So I think we deserve it. I think to get a goals like this probably could could more, but I think we still want to improve uh, any any kind of any kind of respect, you know, with, with the ball without the ball. And your fifth Spurs hat trick, I think. Where, where do you keep the match balls? It's going to my collection, obviously. Yeah, it is a very, very special moment because um, it is not easy scoring the three goals in the, in the Premier League. But look, I mean, without the teammates, can't make this. So obviously, football is a team sport. Credit to every player that gave me the assist, and uh, I'm more happy that we get we get three points today. Uh, Bournemouth were denied a first league win of the season thanks to a 93rd minute equaliser from Brentford. Ended two all. Here's Bournemouth's head coach Andoni Araola. It was close, but it's true that they were pushing a lot. No, uh, I think uh, we conceded in the 93rd, 94th minute, but uh, we were probably finishing the game too tired, too tired. Uh, probably before the last change, there were a couple, especially Milos, that uh, was struggling. We, we should have changed before the last change because he he started asking for for help after, and we couldn't do anything then and uh, things that we, we need to improve. No Lloyd Kelly in your squad today, presumably that had something to do with yesterday's interest in him from Spurs? Yeah, I think uh, yesterday's overall day it was tough for some players because they they were not thinking probably in, the, in today's game and today we needed players really, really focused in, in the game against Frankfurt and uh, I, I think is is the way we've we've moved with this this these cases because Jaden Anthony he he finally ended going to Leeds also with Keith the situation was not clear with Kelly so it's it's difficult to play after so much so many emotion next day you know. Uh, Sheffield United got their first point of the season. In fact, Everton got their first point of the season well in a two-all draw at Bramall Lane. New signing Cameron Archer got one of the goals on his debut. Here's Paul Heckingbottom. The pleasing thing for me is it was a really good game and mm. if we play like that, I'm happy and proud of him. We, it just shows how tough the challenge is. Mm. We've, the, the margins are so fine. We're disappointed with the goals we conceded, but big parts of our performance we're really pleased with. A lot of people build this as a relegation six-pointer. I know that you were playing that down, but how important is it to get a first point on the board at least? Listen, it is, because we could have had more and we've not, and that's how tough it is to earn points in the Premier League. But I've just been saying, as a lot of our staff, uh, a lot of our players understand how tough this league is, and then we can help the uh, the younger players, the younger squad that we're putting together to understand that, and what, that's why we bang on about the margins and the standards. So a point is important, but right now, in all honesty, I'm just focusing on the, on the performances.
Uh, just away from the uh, Premier League, Jude Bellingham got a 95th minute winner for Real Madrid as they beat Getafe by two goals to one. In the Bundesliga this evening, uh, Harry Kane and Bayern Munich are behind at the break. Borussia Mönchengladbach won uh, Bayern Munich two. Uh, Carlos Alcaraz broke Dan Evans in the second set at the US Open and I think he's just held his serve on his turn and leads 4-2 in the second set, having taken the first set 6-2. That's on Sports Extra if you want to listen to it. Uh, More of the same though, please, in the second half here on Five Live. Brighton lead Newcastle by a goal to nil at the Amex. Let's return to James Collins and the experienced John Murray. (laughs) Yeah, he apologised for that at half-time. It was a compliment. It was a compliment. Yeah, exactly. That's what I said to him. He's that's very right. sensitive about it's, these it's things. It's not my fault he took it the wrong Ex- way. Well, that's John all over, James, really. <laughs> right, second half is underway. And uh, certainly agree with Mark in the, in the sense that what we want to see is more of the same. Brighton leading Newcastle by one goal to nil, but more in, of the same in terms of the match that we saw in the first half, which was tremendously entertaining. And uh, off we go, still sun shining on the sloping roofs of the stadium here, Newcastle in possession with the green shirts, white shorts and white socks with the black tops playing it back into their own half. No changes at half-time. So Brighton with Verbruggen in goal, the back four of Veltman, Van Hecker, Dunk and Estupinian, then Gross and Gilmore, March, Pedro, Mitoma and Ferguson, the goal scorer. And Newcastle still in possession with Pope, Trippier, Cher, Byrne and Target. No Botman today. Gimmerinch, Tenali and John Linton either side of him. And then Almiron, Isaac and Gordon. So no changes yet. But um, Callum Wilson, Harvey Barnes, obvious candidates if Eddie Howe wants to make changes but Gordon is sent speeding away down the left hand side but Veltman did well and shepherded it behind so James Collins watching with us here former Welsh international central defender and um, what do you think Newcastle need to do James? Well they started the game you know first first 10 minutes John really well um, you know on the front foot press, pressing closing down and winning the ball high up off, off Brighton so no, they haven't been terrible. They haven't been out of the game. They've had their own chances, but I think you know that in the final third, they, they just need a little bit more quality, and I'm sure the chances will come. Foul by target on March on the halfway line, or at least they came together. It's not given as a foul. Play continues with Newcastle in possession. Referee Stuart Atwell and target plays the ball back into central defence. Still, quite a number of people are coming back to their seats. Lots of attractions here at the Brighton Stadium. Tenali on the right-hand side just holds the ball strongly, takes it infield. He's got João Pedro running after him, but Tenali strong then whips a pass across field and Target takes it into Brighton territory. Newcastle are playing from right to left as we look from our low position just in front of the, the two managers. Certainly Roberto De Zerbi's kept us entertained and, uh, and Jason Tindall and Eddie Howe very often in the technical area together, which isn't allowed as the ball is brought forward by Almiron then Bruno Gimreich flips it forward into the area Tonali now rolls it across but couldn't find the pass to Isaac near the penalty spot Van Hecker just stepped in and then there's a foul out there by Trippier and a free kick yes, to Brighton yes, again John I just I just mentioned it about the, the, the quality in the final final third Tonali's done really well took a good touch he just can't find that pass you've got to say Brighton got defenders back and, and, and covered good areas but like I mentioned it again just a little bit more quality and, and, and Newcastle will get chances yeah so uh, Evan Ferguson scoring the goal with almost half an hour played and it looks as though Brighton might be going to make a change so whether whether someone has just picked up something or whether there was someone at half time who said I'll give it five minutes in the yeah. second half I think it's Milner isn't it that is being spoken to in the uh, in the comfortable blue seat just about 15 20 yards down in front of us so James Milner coming on having been left out of the starting lineup today with Veltman coming in here's March on the right hand side but Gordon and Target do a job together and it bounces out of play I'm just looking at the Brighton players I haven't seen anyone signal or anyone anyone struggling or, or stretching anything off so it, well when it's James Milner getting ready I mean that could be almost anyone yeah. could fit in anywhere as 
Veltman is going to take this, which he does, the throw down the line to March, who then has to step for it. Poor touch from Veltman. Not a, not a classic piece of play from might Brighton. Be, it might be Veltman that's injured. I, yeah, well, maybe it is. I don't think Roberto De Zerbi will be we're showing that to any potential employers for uh, his famous brand of football. But, uh, however, Brighton can't go right all the time, can it, James, as everyone knows? Ball bounces out of playoff Ferguson and that's a throw into Newcastle in their own left-back position. Anthony Gordon just steps off the pitch, there's a bottle there, has a slurp of water. Probably is a, a hot afternoon. Hot work, this. Seagulls, or gulls, if you prefer, wheeling away over the the top of the stadium, landing on that white net metal work on the far side as Brighton win possession back with Dunk and then Veltman goes back to play it to the goalkeeper with those massive white gloves for Bruggen, putting his foot on the ball and then hopping backwards with his foot on top of the ball and then passing it out eventually and Estupinana is now off and away down the left-hand side. Tonali catches up with him, so the pace of that just drops again. Brighton in the blue and white striped shirts just like the deck chairs on Brighton Beach. Van Hecker, now to the right-hand side. Veltman then plays it back to the, the tall, blonde Dutchman, Van Hecker, who rolls his foot over the top of the ball, then passes it forward to Veltman. Forward from him, gross with the pass, down the line, out to the right-hand side, to March. March then overhits it into the area to... Just the, I'm surprised. Just delayed his pass, I think, you know, a couple of seconds before couple of seconds before and it looked like Ferguson would have been it maybe not a shot on goal but he was certainly in but it's great play from Brighton steady build up at the back with Dunk and and, and just nice play you know easy passes and, and cut Newcastle open yeah really fascinatingly poised this with Brighton the narrow lead second goal for Brighton would make it very difficult for Newcastle and now uh, actually Newcastle have lost it playing out from the back but an important challenge by Cher or a tackle I should say won it back and then that might have been a foul by Mitoma on Tonali. No, it's not. Must have just slipped under pressure from Mitoma. And he's conceded a, a throw-in on the far side, level with the edge of the Newcastle penalty area. So Estupinian is coming up to take it. The Ecuadorian international, Estupinian, takes it back towards the halfway line. Uh, by the way, good to see Tarek Lamptey back among the substitutes for Brighton today, who's had his injury problems, the young man. Not played since March, but is among the Brighton subs today. Ball played through the middle for Ferguson. Nice turn. Ferguson now approaching the penalty area. Oh, no, then gets it all wrong. Slips the ball through for the run of Pedro, which never came. And so Pope was able to come forward and take it out, then underarm it, bowling it out to Gordon. But it comes back to the edge of the Newcastle penalty area. Joe Linton near the edge of his own box. Got to be careful. Gross put the challenge in. Joe Linton almost lost it. Target has been robbed. March now into the area. March's ball across. Uh, Pedro with the control, but the defender was able to nip in. It's Bruno Gimmerich actually, who's now running the ball away across his own six yard box to comparative safety, but he's passed it out for a throw to Brighton. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that. Don't dribble it, put two yards off his own line straight across the goal. Well, not in 11 aside football, it's like something out of five aside. And actually, the referee spotted something in there which has resulted in a Newcastle. There must have been an offside in there. Offside. Must have been. And it's a free kick to Newcastle that Pult is going to take. So Brighton 1, Newcastle 0. Uh, both of tomorrow's Premier League games, you'll hear them on 5 Live. Very interesting ones as well. Liverpool against Inform Aston Villa, who've not looked back since the 5-1 the at St James's Park. Excellent play by Risky, but excellent, from Almiron, doing a Gimmerange, running the ball across his own half, but then did find the pass, but then Gordon's attempted ball, that was cut out by Estupinian, and then uh, important challenge from Trippier on Mitoma on that far side to put that out for uh, a throw-in. A few little mistakes, the, the, the start of this first half, it hasn't been as crisp, and, and the passing hasn't been as good, no, nothing major, just, you know, cross-field passes that are, that are being, that are being you know, getting cut out, but... It looks like Newcastle are more around their box, you know, they've taken a few risky risky chances and, like I said, if they go 2-0 down in this, you, you do well to see them getting back into it. Yeah, tough. However, currently it's 1-0. Ball back with Verbruggen. So, yes, Liverpool Villa tomorrow live from Villa Park, then Arsenal Manchester United live from the Emirates. And before that, do not miss Rangers Celtic live from Ibrox with Alistair Bruce Ball and Pat Nevin. Ball passed forward by Veltman, Gross, 
into the full-back position. Good ball across, cut it back towards the penalty spot. Newcastle yeah, don't clear. Second. Pedro's won it back. Pedro now trying to find a position, trying to flick it back. And then Pedro fouls Trippier and it's a free kick to Newcastle. Newcastle are causing themselves so many problems. Just trying to play out. Keevan Trippier, you wouldn't expect it from him. He's a bit lazy, a bit lax. They've had three, four passes in their own defensive, you know, in the 18-yard in the box. Only, only from Brighton, you know, lack of quality that they, they, they haven't conceded again. They've been fortunate there that Brighton haven't made more of any of these recent incidents. Newcastle determined to to play it out from the back, to play through Brighton. Now that's what they're doing again, a target charged down by March, wins the throw-in off the Newcastle left-back. So a throw-in for Solly March to take from the right. Actually leaves it for Veltman. So Veltman, the experienced Dutchman, comes up, the number 34, just holds the ball, ball above his head. The Newcastle fans in their striped shirts behind that goal to our right, throwing taken, headed back to Gross. Now marches in there near the dead ball line. Bruno Gimmerich puts in the challenge to deflect it out of play for a throw-in to Brighton, uh, a corner to Brighton from the right. It's, it's come from Newcastle again, not not wanting to clear the ball, not wanting to get the ball at the pitch. I know it's you know it's not fashionable if you like, or or, or you know what not how Eddie Howe wants him to play, but sometimes you've got to clear your lines and get up the pitch. You can't get out. I think Eddie Howe is going to respond by making a change. Uh, Brighton, whatever they were planning to do with James Mill, now that hasn't happened yet. So Elliot Anderson's been called forward. Three, Three cha triple change. Corner then for Brighton towards the back post, stretched from Ferguson who leapt high for it, got ahead to it but uh, from him just glanced off his head and behind and it is a goal kick well that's the response from Eddie Howe yeah, then I think he's seen enough you think we're going to see a triple substitution here like I said it's, it's all they're on doing though trying to play too much you know sometimes you've got to clear the ball get up the pitch but they're trying it again just, just watching in there starting from a goal kick it's going to be two changes in midfield so Anderson and Longstaff coming on and Callum Wilson as well so uh, it's interesting if if Tonali is going to make way again, as he did against Liverpool last week, you'd think that would be the natural change to make, long staff for Tonali. Here is Bruno Gimmerich for Newcastle. They're in the Brighton half, which has not ha often happened, but Joe Linton, I think he'll be off in a minute, loses out to Pedro, and then Matoma, Ferguson, lovely change of feet from him, but there was cover there for Newcastle, and actually Ferguson, as he was stretching for it, committed a foul, and is, is possibly injured target. So, Eddie Howe might just have to hold off. I think he's OK. Yeah, free kick to Newcastle. Yeah, it? a bit tricky. He's trying, you know, he's trying to get back, gone in for a little challenge. He's, he's caught him on the ankle. He's, he's, he's done well target to get back, actually, because Brighton were in again on the break after Newcastle, you know, losing the ball. So, yes, Joel Linton is off. And... Uh, I think Almiron is sprinting across. Yes, he is. So it looks as though Gordon is going to go out to the right-hand side. And it is Tonali. So Tonali substituted again with more than half an hour to go. He's had a few bright spots. John, he, he hasn't, you know, he hasn't stood out. He hasn't he hasn't done anything, you know, that, that, that like I said, stood out. But um, he looks very disappointed to be coming off as, as he would be. I'm still surprised. Yeah, well, you, you think he's their sort of yeah. creator, their flair play, and they need to get back in the game. I know that Eddie Howe felt that Anderson and Longstaff did really well pre-season. You know, young Anderson, who's come on now, so Joe Linton, who was a doubt for this game, so I'm not surprised he's come off anyway. And Almiron, who I know got has, has received a little bit of criticism after the chances that he wasn't able to take against Liverpool. Here's Isaac down the left-hand side. So he's got Isaac and Wilson on the field together, Eddie Howe, and Isaac wins a corner with that attempted low cross that's deflected behind. But like I said, you know, with Callum Wilson up there now, you know at least, you know, like I said, mentioned it, they, they keep getting caught out of the back. At least they know they can hit that longer ball. Not, you know, I don't want to say a long ball or more, you know, pop, pop ball into the corner and, and, and Callum Wilson will run it. You know, he runs the channels really well. You know, two up front, I think it's a good move from Eddie Howe. Yeah, or perhaps Isaac may be out to the left. We'll see, we'll see. Corner, Trippier to take this, swings it into the back post. Oh, but the Bruggen comes for it. And I'm not sure if he got a touch on that. Referee says, no, he didn't. Hmm. 
not absolutely certain, but it is a goal kick to it Brighton. Looks like he's got wicket keeper, wicket keeper gloves on, so he probably should have goal come and gloves. claimed it. Yes, it does. They're absolutely massive, aren't they? I did go. I went went up to the county ground hole this morning. I've never been there before. Saw the Morris Tate Memorial Gates. And I think You've if Morris, a, Morris, a, I have. I've been all over the Brighton this morning. <laughs> I feel like I've been on my holidays. As uh, Brighton take this free kick out from the back, and then Wilson has rather dived in there on Veltman, and that is a free kick to uh, to Brighton. He's okay. Wilson's okay. Right. Let's go from down here in Sussex to St Andrews on what sounds as though it's been a terrific first day at the Walker Cup, the the amateur. Uh, equivalent if the Ryder Cup if you like and Ian Carter is lucky enough to be there yeah it's been a sensational day today John and it was capped by a very tense half at the last between Matt McLean for the GB and I and the American Preston Summerhays and that means that the big underdogs the home team Great Britain and Ireland will take a seven and a half points to four and a half points lead into the final day tomorrow Thank you, Ian. So coverage of that tomorrow, as well as all of the football. Uh, also, the Italian Grand Prix tomorrow. So you can hear that on online, actually, from 2 o'clock via the BBC Sport website and app. But all of tomorrow's sport. And the US Open tennis continues on Sports Extra with four British players in action. But last we heard Dan Evans up against it against Carlos Alcaraz. So all of that and more tomorrow here's gross gross brighton leading by one goal to nil five live and bbc sounds lines open for 606 as well incidentally to talk to robbie savage and chris sutton longstaff playing it forward for isaac isaac now down the left hand side into the penalty area against van hecker who recovers well against him and actually is able to turn it out for a throw next to the corner flag did really well van heck there you know he's obviously you know jockeying back towards his own goal is sometimes you know you see defenders dive in but he's done really well he's watched the ball hasn't hasn't gone with the, the movement of Isaac and defended really well he's had a good day against him hasn't he yeah he's done very well yeah. he's coming into the team done, done very well and actually the fact it did bounce the other side of the post the corner flag so it is a corner to Newcastle Trippier to take this Newcastle have packed the Brighton six yard box Brighton still leading 1-0 here's the delivery goalkeeper comes doesn't get there misses his punch still in the area bounces down and is volleyed away Pedro got there first for Brighton and walloped it to the halfway line where it's being battled for by Gilmore, but also for Newcastle. It looked a little bit more dangerous, the two, the two corners or three corners we've had in the second half. Newcastle, great delivery as well again, you've got to say right under the crossbar and the keeper struggled with all three of them. So uh, yeah. I'm sure Eddie Howe will be thinking that's a, a chance where they can get back in the game. Yeah, and, uh, and Newcastle dealt with that I think it was Target actually who won that Newcastle long and forward again that's headed away by Veltman the, the substitutions have changed and helped Newcastle remember last week against Liverpool how it was felt that Liverpool's substitutes had changed things against Newcastle Isaac might have been hauled over there no free kick now Gilmore halfway inside his own half running the ball forward and then passing it forward this is one for Ferguson to chase Byrne the former Brighton man pushes out his chest and gets there first and then clears it via a deflection out of play on the halfway line. That's caught by Roberto De Zerbi, who throws the ball back for what he's given as a Newcastle throw, uh, a Brighton throw near the halfway line. Brighton fans getting behind their team. Absolutely packed the place. Great times here. James Collins was telling me before the match how you played against Brighton at the With Dean Stadium when they were there. Showing I my mean, age, John. The, Showing my age. But what it also shows is when the football club has gone, yeah. transformation. Spent almost 16 years without a home ground, but this really feels like a, a happy home. The old With Dean was the, the longest walk in football history from the dressing room to the dugouts. One of, one of my early early memories of, of being at Cardiff City. Yeah, good, good for you. Good for youth to experience that. Brighton one, Newcastle nil, as you were at the time. As the ball's played out towards Pedro, challenged by Cher. Newcastle got it back. Here's Gordon, who's now on the right-hand side, switching across from the 
the left, so it's Gordon up against the Stupinian, but comes in field to Bruno Gimreich. Here's Isaac now towards the left. Isaac low ball in towards the edge of the area. Anderson is there, but can't take it on. Brighton have got it away. March is bringing it forward. Solly March. Isaac comes back. March beats him. Still inside his own half, then plays it through to Pedro. Pedro takes it on now. He's got Ferguson to his right. Slightly overhits the pass. Down into the fullback position, and Dan Byrne gets there first. Clears it. Ball still in play. Isaac. This has been shielded now by Anderson. But Gross has got it back for Brighton against him. Gross. Little ball back. March to Ferguson, who's still out towards the right hand side now. Veltman behind him. Still 1 0 Brighton lead. Five Live and the World Service from the BBC. Lines open to talk to Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton on 08 085 909 693. So book your call now. You can talk about the weekend's football every Saturday and every Sunday night with those two. Chris was at Burnley today for our earlier commentary. You might want to talk to him about that. Ferguson turns, shoots. Oh, he scored! What a finish! The 18-year-old, a poacher's goal in the first half, but that was outstanding from 25 yards. Evan Ferguson 2, Brighton and Hove Albion 2, Newcastle 0. It's a great goal, John, it really is. I was just going to mention it before, you know, we're talking about his hold-up play. He's put in hell of a shift today. His first goal is a nice composed finish. This is brilliant. For a centre-half, he's come off the centre defenders. No one's followed him. He's turned, had a touch and bent it with his right foot in the corner. It's a great goal. Came centrally. It was Gilmore's little ball through. He had space there, so you know. So much time. You know, you look at it, being a bit critical of, you know, looking at the defenders. Dan Burns got to come tight with him. He hasn't. He's got a, He's got on the ball, turned sharp, one, two touches forward and bent it in there. He hasn't struck it hard. Quality, real quality with his right foot and bent it in the bottom, bottom left-hand corner. Pinpoint it was, the cheers because it's just been shown on the big screens. And as that right foot shot from, what, 23, 24 yards, something like that, he hit it perfectly. A little bit of bend in, Pope diving to his left. And as you heard there, the big cheer when it found the bottom corner. Sort of a signs of a real, you know, natural finisher, John. He hasn't had to hit it hard. You know, a lot of players would, they think they've got to strike it. He's just bent it lovely in the corner, and, and it's, he deserves it. I was just going to mention his work rate, the way he's, he's, he's marshaled the front line. He, he's been superb today, really has. And Billy Gilmore will get an assist for that as well, with a simple pass, really. To go to his highlights on Match of the Day this <laughs> Exactly. And I think they might be now. 2-0, the lead. Newcastle have got a lot to do here. They need a goal quickly. 2-0 down. But Isaac... Anderson does well to Isaac. Back to Anderson, left side of the area, pulls it back. It's gone all the way. Gordon, oh, he steered it wide. There were players in the way, teammates and opponents. He's, but Gordon arriving on that right side of the box. got to hit the target, John. You know, like just gone 2-0 down, such a big opportunity. Worked the, worked the ball really well, Newcastle. Cut back, he's coming all on his own on the edge of the box. And it's not even close, if I'm honest. I'm probably... 13, 14 yards, side foot, there is players, but he's got to be hitting the target. It's, it's, it's gone six six yards wide. He's, he's screwed it horribly wide as he arrived onto it. Dear, oh dear. But uh, I think that, that Ferguson second goal followed swiftly by that miss. You know, that's that's all making doesn't, it doesn't, harder yeah, for Newcastle. Doesn't look great, does it? Uh, and now we've got a little bit of pushing and shoving between target I think it's been yellow carded for the initial foul but he was he was shoved he was shoved there free kick was taken quickly referee's going to bring it back towards the halfway line and uh, and Matt target was yellow carded for the initial challenge which conceded the free kick um, so while they organize themselves let's get an update from from the latest the British players in action at the US Open Russell Fuller is there in New York Dan Evans is making Carlos Alcaraz work hard, John. It's very enjoyable, but Alcaraz leads by two sets to love, and he's won the first game of the third set. Jack Draper now two sets to one up on Michael Moe of the States. 3-2 Draper on serve in the fourth as he tries to reach his first Grand Slam last 16 match. And Cameron Norrie lost the last 14 points of the first set to drop it to the unseeded Matteo Arnaldi. Three games all in the second. Brighton doing it cockily now, I'll tell you in a moment, but Pedro carrying it forward, but Anderson was able to come across and 
and stop his progress. However, only temporarily, it comes through the middle. Hurt Ferguson might have another Premier League hat-trick today after Haaland and Son. Ferguson, scorer of both goals in this match. But just while we were listening to Russell James at the other end, Bart for Brooken really took a chance for the ball at his feet against Anthony Gordon. I gave him a little bit of stick for saying he was he was good with his feet in the uh, in the first half, but fair play to him. He's, he's done a little drag back or a little croif and it's, it's worked out perfectly. Got up the other end and had another chance from it. Yeah. Did the Bart man? I was just going to say, Evan Ferguson. Just watching him run around, he reminds me of a Rooney. Did I just yeah. his stature and the way he's running around and, and that finish even that was something that Wayne Rooney was doing probably 20 years ago that sort of cultured finish and he's got this sort of stature in him as well yeah T a taller man but but that finish I mean people will see it if they haven't seen it already I can see exactly what you mean the, the way that he put that away Brighton 2 Newcastle nil, and uh, Gordon having that chance shortly after Ferguson made it 2-0 if you think back Joe Linton had an opportunity that he made for himself shortly after Ferguson scored the first goal. But Mitoma now to the edge of the area. Here is Ferguson, shoots, oh. deflected in! It's three for Brighton. That's a big deflection, but I think he might get it for the hat-trick. What a day for the 18-year-old. Brighton three, Newcastle nil. And it's three points coming Brighton's way, as well as three goals collected by Evan Ferguson, surely. Brilliant from Evan Ferguson again. Like I say, it, it is a big de deflection, but, you know, you deserve it when you've played as well as he is, you've worked as hard as him. It's, it's again, I think it's Newcastle giving the ball away quite comfortable. And it's, it's two or three Billy Gilmore's involved. You know, it's... it's it's brilliant, you know, the instinct, he's had a touch, a bit of space has opened, he's took the shot, you know, it's, it's, it's deflection, yeah, of course it is, but he's, he's, he's took his touch and had the shot, and like I said, it's nothing he doesn't deserve, he's been spectacular. And is it going to be his goal? Yeah. Yes, it is, yeah, it, we can say, they've just shown the angle from behind the shot that came off Cher, I think, but it, it looked like it was on target, but a massive deflection off Cher, so Pope was going the wrong way, and that big deflection took it into... Well, he was trying, from his point of view, to bend it into the bottom left corner. It ended up going in the bottom right corner. Similar again with his left showing his quality with his left foot. You know, he was bending that one with his left foot into the far corner. He deserves his luck. He really does. So, 3-0. Brighton 3, Newcastle 0. It wasn't meant to be like this for Newcastle after their romp against Aston Villa on the first Sunday, on the first Saturday of the season when they won so well, so impressively, impressively, so excitingly against Aston Villa. After that, it's going to be three defeats in a row against three of the best teams around. Yeah, but still, this will worry Eddie Howe, this one. You know, the, like we said, they mentioned the other two, the, the last two losses against Man City and Liverpool. He would have come here today, Eddie Howe, with his team, expecting to get three points. Put, you know, put, put Brighton under pressure. Like I said, they started all right for 10 minutes, but after that, Brighton really taking control with their quality. And, and, and to be honest, I think they've got to be a little bit careful here now, you know, because you know, there's still still 18 minutes to go. Brighton are having all the possession and, and still creating chances. Just wondering what the timing was of the third goal. We'll see if I can find that out. I think the uh, second one was 65. Just wonder how how soon after that it was scored. It must have been within five minutes, you would think. But it does, you know, the chances, as I just mentioned, in the build-up to the goal, the opportunities Newcastle had, you know, they weren't able to take chances against Liverpool that could have won them the game last Sunday. And here... It's the fine margins, John. They had a chance, you know, early on, for the first three, four minutes. And, you know, if that goes in, it's a different game. But that, that, that's football, that's Premier League football. You know, you don't take your chances against a quality side like Brighton. They're going to cause you trouble. And now Shares in trouble against Matilma. It just managed to get back and, and put in a challenge and Trippier was able to come across. But, uh, but actually, you know, when you think about the nature of the goals, they've been quite easy to score against Newcastle today without Botman. Well... As uh, Brighton win a goal kick, they're 3 0 down Newcastle and they're putting a centre defender on, so that that would that would probably say <laughs> how Eddie Howe's thinking at the minute. Yeah, Jamal Lascelles is going to come on. In fact, there's going to be a, a double change. So Alexander Isak is is making way. Harvey Barnes is going to come on to play on the left hand side. But I mean, this game must have gone for Newcastle, and I know what happened here last week. 
and, and, and what's happened here for Brighton against Newcastle could easily have happened for them against West Ham last week yeah and again it's the fine margins John uh, take your chances I think West Ham obviously set up slightly differently to Newcastle they have come out at times and tried to press Brighton which which this Brighton team want because they want teams to press them and then they can they can do their little patterns of play that we all see and, and get around them so the game probably suited West Ham you know last week but you've got to say Brighton have been very very impressive this yeah, afternoon again I mean they could have uh, really Brighton could have won all four matches just like just uh, Roberto De Zerbe is, is not happy you can hear him perhaps shouting in the background because Brighton's substitutes were not ready I mean it would be for sure I, it strikes me as a man that I wouldn't want to make angry either John he's, um, he's fiery to say the least he certainly is Roberto De Zerbe he gave them an absolute volley here is Longstaff for Newcastle but Brighton are winning this 3-0 and here's Barnes into the action for the first time Barnes goes for the curl this diving header away by Van Hecker inside the penalty area or Gross might have injured himself just clearing that away I hope not as uh, there's a slip centre field by Gilmore and Longstaff little ball to the edge of the area totally breaks down trying to find Gordon just passed it to his stooping young and Gross who, as I say, has been named in the Germany squad with the Euros in Germany next summer. Uh, and he's doing his best to, to try and run this off. There's a foul on March by uh, Dan Byrne, and that's going to be a yellow card. March was trying to sprint away, blocked by Byrne. Yellow card, and that's now three of the Newcastle back four have been booked. Yeah, I, th I think he had to do it, to be fair. I think he, was in, he knew he was in trouble. Dan Byrne, you know, he's, he's, he doesn't want to get in a foot race with, with Solly March because, you know, there's only going to be one winner, so he's he's took the cynical foul and, and took the yellow card. But I said it's all looking a little bit desperate for Newcastle now. You know, they, they're trying, you know, they're, they're puffing and puffing and trying to create chances. But it's, it's just not happening. And, and again, you've got to give all the credit to, to Brighton, the way, they've, the way they've closed them down, the way they've, you know, passed the ball, the way they've created chances. It, they've been magnificent. Uh, Billy Gilmore is coming off, João Pedro as well. These are the first two ch changes for Brighton. And it's João Pedro just turning away first and, and coming onto the field. Ma uh, Mahmoud Dahoud, one of the, the signings that Brighton have made this summer. Free transfer, actually, from Borussia Dortmund. German international, experienced midfielder. And Billy Gilmore getting a, an excellent reception off. And, uh, and even though... Ferguson will be named as the man of the match almost certainly because he scored a hat-trick but I think Billy Gilmore has been excellent he's been brilliant again as all the Brighton players are you know and we mentioned it first half it's, 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 love, it's great to see you know a centre midfielder wanting the ball constantly you know making space not, not, not hiding not, not wanting the ball and every time he gets it trying to turn trying to play a forward pass and got to say I know like you say Evan Ferguson's going to get all the headlines but I think a, a special mention needs to go to Billy Gilmore today and Tarek Lamptey is back onto the field so that's great to see had uh, some nasty injury problems been out of the game since March has eased his way back and the young man 22 years old who uh, we thought he might be an England international but he's committed himself to Ghana and he is onto the field and actually playing in an advanced role on the right hand side so he's taken over from Solly March there who seems to have moved more centrally so Brighton 3 Newcastle nil. Newcastle United fans might be uh, calling Chris and Robbie to talk about just how things are with Newcastle tough run of games though they knew that before the start of the season but the optimism was so high as there's a foul centre field here in Trippier colliding with Ferguson and also Estupinian has gone down there as well and I think that is going to be given as a as a Brighton free kick dropping like flies out there John oh. so uh, Mah Mahmoud Dahoud coming on into the midfield and uh, it's actually Bruno Gimmerich wasn't it who was involved in conceding the, the free kick but it was Kieran Trippier who was caught. It looked as if he was caught initially, and he and this was all a bit, all of it's a bit clumsy. Yeah, several, a bit, a bit. several players ended up careering down 
but Trippier, he did, he did grab the back of his hamstring. Yeah, it looked like he, he went straight for his hamstring. He did. He's, he's, he's trying to run it off, but if he's done his hamstring, he won't be running that off. Suddenly now for Newcastle, you know, the great excitement about the Champions League group. But you then you've also got to take that into it, John, as well. Yeah. The, the added games, the added pressure, the added expectation that's around Newcastle. This obviously wouldn't have been in the plan, losing three out of their first games, uh, four games. But again, it's, it's, it's only going to build, you know, more more games, more pressure, more you know, more pressure from the fans expecting. So it is, it's, you know, it's not desperate times for Newcastle by any stretch of the imagination, but it's certainly not the start they would have wanted. So, uh, so Newcastle, so Dan Byrne is now back at left back. So Target, did I say that? I'm not sure if I did. Target is one of the players who left the field, and uh, Burns back at left back, and Jamal Lascelles alongside Cher in centre of the fence. Jamal Lascelles, who obviously was involved in what seemed like a really nasty incident. You might well have heard about it this week, a late-night incident in Newcastle. His brother was involved, Eddie Howe was talking about it yesterday. But I don't think there was any suggestion that Jamal Lascelles would have lost the captaincy after that because of the set of circumstances that were involved. But he has warned his players, Eddie Howe, that really they shouldn't be out in the early hours. And the, and the point he was making, with all of the matches Newcastle have, and, and certainly now the pressure is on. I think the full focus for Newcastle is going to have to be on, on the matter in hand. Brighton 3, Newcastle 0. Veltman can't keep the ball in here and, and Brighton are going to uh, make a, another double substitution. The old mates from Liverpool. I was going to say, if there's two lads you want to bring on to, to shore a game up and make sure, make sure you get the three points, it's, it's, it's James Milner and Adam Leilani. Yeah, coming on. So Solly March is, is the first man off. He's played well as well. And, uh, and here's Evan Ferguson leaving the field. The 18-year-old turns 19 next month. What a day he's had. Slaps hands with James Milner. Roberto De Zerbi does not go across to him. Didn't even look he at him. He did not it's even the, look at him. It's clear, it, it clearly, did, that's, what he, that's what he expects from the young lad. Brilliant, didn't even look at him. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Roberto De Zerbi stood on the edge of the coaching area looking the other way as the new hero, the hat-trick man, following in the footsteps today of none other than Erling Haaland and Son Hyung Min in scoring a Premier League hat-trick. I'm, I'm sure when the cameras and, and, and all that and, and the press are not here and the fans, he will um, he'll have a special uh, a special talk with him or you know, speak to him when he gets in the dressing room. But I, that was strange. You think he'd be first one over? Yeah, that, yeah. People talk about the similarities between De Zerbi and Guardiola in terms of how they. It's, it's probably act. what they expect from their players, though, John. To be yeah, honest, I'm not, and, sure, uh, you know. I'm not sure you see that from Guardiola, would you? He has Lamptey on the right hand side, back towards Veltman. So quite changed now, Brighton, after all of the alterations that have been made. Dahut playing the ball out towards the left-hand side. Stupinian is still there. But the game's gone, really. You can, you can take time away, give Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton a call. Alternatively, Sports Extra has the commentary live from New York on what uh, could be a, a long night, actually. An exciting night of tennis on there. Lamptey playing it infield. Gross passes it back. Here is Lamptey flying. And he's away. He's away from the challenge that came in on him. Lamptey into the area. Burns back there. Tried to pull it across. But Bruno Gimreinch was able to step in for Newcastle. Oh, and that's a nasty one from Lamptey. He's dived in there on Bruno Gimreinch. That was a bad challenge. And that's a yellow card for the, the Brighton number two. And, and Bruno Gimreinch, I don't think, will be best pleased about that at all it's, it's, it's not needed either John. it was just a bit of a bit of a rash challenge at a time that he, he didn't need to do it but you know it's again from Newcastle you know on the break Shea diving in Fabian Shea diving in and then he's gone for his hamstring like he's, he's pulled his hamstring but he's got up and run on but yeah this this game is, is completely gone for Newcastle James Collins with us uh, Newcastle trying to to, to get out which they do, ball played back to Lascelles and Jamal Lascelles passes it forward towards the, the halfway line where Wilson is beaten by Dunk, they'll be training against each other or with each other 
bit for of a, England this week. Bit of a strange one, but because I'm in the centre backs club, John, I'm going to give a bit of a mention to Van Hecker for mm -hmm. for, for, for mm -hmm. Brighton. Uh, I know we've talked about their flair and you know Dunk as well next to him. The flair, you know, the flair and the, the, the way Brighton play in their passing. But I think coming into the team today, I think he's been excellent with, with what he's asked to do. Second half, not a lot, but everything he's done, he's done it well. He's been crisp. He's, he's, he's defended very well. Started from that very first challenge on Isaac, which actually. When we look back at it, thought it might have had a shout for a penalty, but uh, anyway, it looked great as he put the challenge in, as Newcastle send a long pass forward. But in, in common with the afternoon that they've had here, and there's the crowd, 31,620. Amazing support, as the man on the loudspeaker says. It, it's truly been Brighton's day here, and it's going to be three wins out of four this season. And they're singing their songs. And Roberto De Zerbi is demanding more of the, the remaining. He's made four so far, hasn't he? So he still has one more that he can make. It's, it's unbelievable. Watching him and his staff, though, you, you'd think that they were drawing the game or they were trying to go for the win. The way they're trying to get the substitutes ready, the way they... You know, it's, it's, it's great to see that they, 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 the intensity of it. Yeah. Sixth place finish as last season. The highest Brighton have ever finished. In the, in the whole of their history, 122 years, highest they've finished in the league. And that's after finishing ninth under Graham Potter the previous season, which was also the highest they've finished. That's the, that's the route this team are on. And that champion, that uh, Europa League group that they've got, Ajax, Marseille and AEK Athens, is an excellent draw for them. As uh, Gross actually is caught in possession by Elliot Anderson. Lascelles then passes it forward. But uh, Estupinian comes back, prevents the ball from reaching Gordon, who then puts in the challenge. And he's one of the Newcastle players on a yellow card. Got to be careful. Newcastle's next match also doesn't look terribly comfortable as the ball is played forward and there's a foul uh, out on the far side. And that is a yellow card, I think, for James Milner on Anthony Gordon. That's uh, ex-Liverpool on ex-Everton, that one. Yeah, just clipped him and went down and that's a yellow card to the newly arrived James Milner uh, and the, uh, the final change is going to see for Brighton Simon Adingra coming on Evan Ferguson inevitably is named as the man of the match but as you've heard if you've been listening throughout I've made my case for Billy Gilmore James Collins has had a big mention for Jan Paul van Hecker at the back but it's a free kick to Newcastle on the right-hand side. And uh, Brighton have yet to keep a clean sheet this season. I think that's what they'll be after here. But a free kick to be swung in from the right-hand side. It's a deep one to share at the back post who heads it back across goal, but straight into the outstretched gloves of Bart Verbruggen. James. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a chance for Newcastle, but it's, it's more hit and hope, you know. It's, it's all they can do, they can toss it into the box at this late stage but it's so comfortable the, the, the whole second half to be honest for, for Brighton you know we've, we've seen they had a little blip last week where West Ham did really well against them and, and, and sort of tactically outdid them with, with the way they defended but um, this is back to the Brighton we've seen you know for the last couple of years they, they've really been good Newcastle on the other hand started strongly but really faded in this game and, and, and you know Eddie Howe's you know, got things to look at, got, got decisions to make. So, uh, Evan Ferguson named as the, the man of the match. And uh, despite, and you're absolutely right, I agree with you about Van Hecker, but I don't think he's going to be picked out for the analysis. I, I don't, on I don't, I don't, I don't think I want him to be man of the match, but no. I just thought, ex yeah, yeah, ex no. said the back, totally watching agree. him play, and I, I thought I'd give him a little mention. No, it'll be um, Evan Ferguson as uh, Adingra will come on. This is another of the young Brighton stars, Ivory Coast International, who was away on loan last season at uh, Union saint gilloise who are the club that is owned by Tony Bloom, the Brighton owner, so he was there, did very well actually, scored 15 goals for Union saint gilloise as a winger, and uh, he's come on as a substitute in a couple of the matches this season, his first appearances senior competitive appearances for Brighton and he's coming on for Pascal Gross who, who did wonder whether he, he had a little injury he did get a handshake from the manager did he? it's interesting isn't it? 
maybe he was just happened to be in the area yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah, caught his eye. Brighton three, Newcastle nil. Free kick for Newcastle, fired from the halfway line, long to the edge of the area, flick headed on by Byrne, but all the way through to Verbruggen, and it's just just not happening for uh, for Newcastle United. It hasn't happened, and it's going to be three defeats in a row. And I mean, how how it's, it's, how it's one of them? Yeah, it's difficult it's, to know, isn't yeah, it? How concerned should we yeah. be about them? I mean. Not overly is, is is the truth, you know. That they'll be disappointed. It's not the start they wanted. But you look back at this game, you know, they've had chances early on. They they, they, they had a, a good chance to go one and up, and it's a different game. Here's a Stupinian streaking away down the left hand side, plays it to Matoma inside the area. Lovely footwork from him, plays it across. Then the control and the shot from Adingra, who's just come onto the field. But there were defenders back in there. It bounced away, and it was hooked away by Cher, who's still feeling his hamstring, incidentally, Cher. And that was an issue for him pre-season, if I remember rightly. He was a doubt for the first match against Aston Villa. But the opportunity there for Adingra, he went for, bounced up for him, went for a sort of overhead kick style, but it was blocked inside the box. So we're in the uh, 90th minute now, not far away from 6.06, with Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton, 08.08. 08. 5909693 is the number to book your call or you can text 85058 get in touch hashtag BBC 606 5 Live and BBC Sounds where you can listen to the live radio listen back to any of our commentaries as well if you've been at the match you can listen to them all over again Newcastle fans heading back tonight won't be listening to this again I'm sure absolutely I mean bearing in mind the train strike they've done terrifically well with the difficulties of that well, they're not really listening to it because of me and you, John. Or well, maybe they <laughs> <laughs> might, might switch up, might, might go back to listen again. You're thinking, oh, not those two. Um, Evan Ferguson, by the way, joins other other 18-year-olds to score Premier League hat tricks. Michael Owen, Robbie Fowler, Chris Bart Williams. It's not bad company, that is it for Evan, Evan Ferguson? And a uh, big deflection for his last one, but it would appear that he is getting it as. Brighton come forward again in added time but there's an offside flag and it's a free kick to Newcastle halfway inside their own half yeah um, uh, deep inside their own half yeah the other um, the point I was making James Newcastle's next match is actually against Brentford it's at St James's Park but it's against Brentford it's Tough. difficult difficult opponent Tough. Anderson is fouled on the halfway line by Mahout although that will have to change that was due to be a Sunday um, 4.30 but that's the Sunday before the Tuesday that Newcastle are going to be in Milan, so they'll have to, that'll have to be brought forward. And as I mentioned, that's going to be the problem, you know, it's, 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 it's thick and fast, you know, you, you get success as Newcastle have and, and, and deserve last year in the Champions League, but there's no rest, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be new to them back in the cha well, back in the Champions League, but new to, new to this sort of, you know, regime, and um, it's going to be tough on, on the squad, and like I say, if, you, if you're getting beat, you know, I know it's early days, but if you get him beat, it does knock your confidence. Long staff, long ball, high to Wilson inside the area, beats Van Heck and scores! And it's a goal back for Newcastle. And their supporters, at the other end of the ground, they've got something to cheer down here in Sussex. Shirts off, twirling them above their heads. So many bare chests in there. And it's Brighton 3, Newcastle 1, and Callum Wilson has scored his second of the season. It's just a bit of a hit and hope ball, really. You know, like we mentioned, the game has gone for Newcastle. Done it. The, the old commentator's curse on, on Van Hecker. You know, he's dived in a little bit and, and tried to win the ball and missed it. And Callum, Callum Wilson's great finish with the outside of his of his right foot. But, um, yeah, this is something... All we could say is it's probably something for the Newcastle fans to talk about on the way home. So a goal for Callum Wilson, but it won't affect the outcome does mean as well that, that Brighton, like Newcastle, yet to keep a clean sheet this season. They'll be annoyed about that. Roberto De Zerbi, I think it goes without saying that he'll be annoyed standing there on the side of the pitch with his hand on his chin. He'll be shouting at them about that. I'm sure in the dressing room. Shout, shout and shout again. Here's Gordon on the right-hand side. Back to the halfway line. <laughs> I can't get over him not shaking the hand of Evan Ferguson. I mean, that's one of the highlights of the, the afternoon. A hat-trick man. I, bet. I think he's that intense. He, he, 
he sort of saw him come off and he was he was shouting at other players on the pitch, you know, to do their jobs and he's and he's just forgot to shake his hand. But uh, like I said, I'm sure they yeah. I'm sure they'll speak in the dressing room after. Harvey Barnes been fouled by um, Tarek Lamptey, who's already been booted. And they thought for a moment there, the Brighton fans, that the referee was coming across to show him a second yellow card, but he hasn't. It's just a free kick. But um, I know I know Pep Guardiola wasn't there today, was he, because of his back operation? But I'm sure if, if he'd been there, you would have given a hug to Haaland. He has Trippier with the free kick for Newcastle towards the edge of the area. Newcastle's not given this up. You know, let's not be too previous here. We've still got plenty of added time to play. We're in the uh, fifth minute now of added time. Brighton, though, defend this latest ball to the edge of the area and then Adingra is pulled over by Lassell, so that'll be a free kick to Brighton, half inside their own half. In added time here, 3-1 to Brighton. Back to New York, Russell Fuller. Dan Evans fighting back. Two sets down to Carlos Alcaraz, but 5-3 up in the third. Jack Draper's into the fourth round of a Grand Slam for the first time after a four-set win over Michael Moe. But Cameron Norrie's having a shocking day so far. Two sets and two love down to the unseeded Matteo Arnaldi. And the commentary continues right now on Sports Extra. So we have Rangers, Celtic, Liverpool, Aston Villa, Arsenal, Manchester United, as well as all of the, the top football, all of the top sport covered for you tomorrow. 11.30 start to Five Live Sport because of the old firm lunchtime kickoff. Uh, Fabian shea has got to come off here. He's doing himself more damage. He, he felt his hamstring about 10 minutes ago down here, and I think he's just gone for a sprint and gone again. But I think Newcastle views all the subs. I'd, I'd, I'd rather get him off because he's doing himself some damage here. They have. They've used... Uh, all five. So share hamstring injury. Botman, and I, I think he did train Botman this week, so I don't think it's long-term that. Here is uh, excellent work from Lalana. Lalana getting away from the challenge that was put in on him, just wriggled away from it. That's classic Lalana. Then Lampy's been fouled by Byrne, and Brighton go all the way back to Verbruggen on the edge of his penalty area. The Brighton goalkeeper passing it out to Dahoud, who got a shove from Longstaff but kept his feet. And then uh, Milner playing it back to the edge of the area. Dunk strikes it forward. Lovely touch by Lalana. Centre field gets it back as well from a stupid yank. And then he sets off Milner down the left hand side. Matilma in an offside position. So it's a free kick to Brighton. We're in the sixth minute of added time now. So not, not long until 6 06 once we round things up here. But Robbie and Chris waiting for your calls 08 085 909 693. Uh, read all about it on the football pages of the the BBC website, Match of the Day tonight, anytime on the iPlayer and the Five Live Football Daily podcast from BBC Sounds in the morning. Here come Newcastle, Barnes flicking it back. We'll have the live interviews as well, Roberto De Zerbi and Eddie Howe. You'll hear them within the body of 606 too, so stay tuned for that. The contrasting interviews as Lamptey nicks it away from Cher and he's got the freedom of the right side into the box, pulls it across and somehow Mitoma couldn't finish sliding into the back post and it was through him and behind for a goal kick It's all come from Shea, we mentioned it you know, he, he can't move and Lanty's done really well, nicked the ball and he's in he's played a great ball across, we're just watching the replay, I think he's just missed the ball Oh no, it's a touch from Trippier in front it of him was. Should have been a corner, defending. it was well, well played Trippier but um, the Newcastle fans still singing their songs in that section behind the goal, never mind the scoreline. They might be staying down in Brighton tonight as Bruno Gimmerainch is fouled. And that's going to be a yellow card for Lalana. That was a cheap one in the circumstances, but it's a, it's a free kick to Newcastle. Yes, they may, they may well be staying down, driving back tomorrow, many of the Newcastle fans. Why wouldn't you in... In the amazing like, city of like Brighton. Having a good time over there, they? Well, they'll be having a good time tonight as well. You see some sights in Brighton, I can tell you. Free kick for Newcastle with uh, Nick Pope waiting, waiting to take it. That was the start of the downfall, really, wasn't it? The, the opening goal, as, it, as they tend to be when you're 3-0, 3-1 down. Long ball forward is flick-headed through to Verbruggen, the goalkeeper. I think the full-time whistle is about to go. There it is. Yeah, cheers for Brighton. Well played, Brighton and Hove Albion. Good winners against Newcastle United. 3-1 the final score. Evan Ferguson, the principal star, the teenager, the 18-year-old, after his hat-trick today. What a great day for him to remember. <laughs> Three very different goals 
that's so important and he's just walking I would imagine just going to keep an eye on him back onto the uh, the pitch just keeping an eye on Roberto De Serbi the, the cameras are with him yes there he is and uh, Roberto De Serbi I'm sure has given him a slap on the back there a late goal back for Newcastle United for, for Callum Wilson but, but worrying no, no question about Newcastle even though they've been beaten by Manchester City Liverpool and Brighton here and there on their home ground that, three defeats in a row for Newcastle James Collins yeah for any club it'd be, it'd be worrying like you said it hasn't, it hasn't been ideal but you know we, we, we've got to talk about Brighton they were, they were they were superb Newcastle had a 10 minute spell early on where they had a couple of chances but after that Brighton had a bit of a blip against West Ham last, last, last week you know West Ham were very good but it wasn't the Brighton that we know they've came here again and shown us what a really real, real quality side they are Special, obviously you've got to give a special mention to Evan Ferguson the way he took his goals his work rate the way he, he ran the channels he held the ball up but also Billy Gilmore in behind him was excellent as well so you know good good afternoon for Brighton back to winning rate, winning ways and, 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 and fully deserved yeah thank you very much James Collins to 606 in a moment after the news but for Brighton that is three wins out of four this season and actually it could easily be four out of four West Ham having come here and picked them off, even though Brighton had 81% possession in that match. So I can understand why the Brighton fans are waiting in the centre circle as the Newcastle players go to their supporters behind the goal to our right. So, yes, 6 or 6 on the way. But live football tomorrow, we have Rangers Celtic from 12, Liverpool Aston Villa from 2, and Arsenal Manchester United from 4.30. Commentary on those three matches, but all of the top sport covered throughout the course of the day. So an 11.30 start to 5 Live Sport tomorrow with Steve Crossman. But uh, 606, waiting to talk, uh, take your calls, 08085 909 693. Text 85058. Get in touch, hashtag BBC 606. There'll be the live interviews, we hope, as well, with uh, Roberto De Zerbi and Eddie Howe. But you will hear... Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage on the other side of the five live news. Listen on BBC Sounds.